First and 10 for Bethune Cookman from their own 10 yard line. But they with two in the backfield with him takes the snap against the four in the slant in the from the 10. And taking in easy order, this is gonna be a run. Williams, or it should be Jimmy Robinson on the carry, nothing doing, lost three yards back to the East, rearing its ugly head. We haven't thrown back to back passes. You know, we throw a pass, then we will do a run. So it's easy to kind of read. See? Seven. Delta Devil's gonna dial up some pressure here. Four down linemen, both linebackers tight to the line. All five defensive backs well back. Three or four receivers in the formation. They do rush. It's gonna be a screen right side. Omari Stort trying to work free at the 13, and he's wrestled down at the 14. Plenty out of here. And now we're gonna lean on Anthony Frederick again. Well, Frederick has been a weapon the last few weeks, so mm -hmm. hopefully he can get a good, good kick right here. Uh, a familiar position for him, bunting from his own goal line. We should be back, bounce at the 40 yard line, take a BCU roll to the- Frederick got it up in that jet stream that was what a nice kick. Long first quarter here today. It's uh, been almost an hour. The Grambling State first quarter was almost an hour too, so could be in for a long night here at Daytona Stadium. <laughs> Down into the red zone, but a blocked field goal meant they had some point. Something going to give. Yeah, the Wildcat defense can't be on the field the whole time in the game and, and, and still work as effective. Here's a blitz from the far side, throwing. Oh, it was tipped. It's uh, it's numero um, uno. It's Omari Hill Robinson. Of course where it is. Where is Clement going with the football? Come on to the sideline, son. It was tipped right into. Enter is it? No, um, no, Omari. Last week. Yep. So he, ha he now has four takeaways on the year. Three interceptions and a fumble recovery. That's why you're all twack first team. 35 seconds left to go in the first quarter. Wildcats on the valley side of the field at the 47 yard line going right to left in the all black with gold helmets, gold numbers, gold trim. Bethea takes the snap, handoff Jimmy Robinson. No, it's a fake, flat over the middle, and it's caught. Diving catch, Bethea at the 30 yard line. First down to perfection. Here comes Markai Shaw back in the game. He threw the, the touchdown pass on a trick play last time he was in. First and 10 for BCU at the Valley 30. Bethea takes the snap. It's gonna be a jet sweep to the right. Omari Stewart tries to slip out of a tackle. He's gonna be wrestled down. Forward progress makes him lose one yard back to the 31. Yeah, that they, again, there's just nothing we can do running the ball right now. That play was deemed from the- Took 47 minutes. My God. <laughs> but zero's on the clock. Here at Daytona Stadium, Michael Torello, Wildcats with a second nothing lead and have second down at 11 from the Valley 31. Talik Bethea is in at quarterback, Markai Shaw the running back, tight end left, two receivers caught, coming back to the football, Jalen zone. Jay Brown, he skips over a tackle, falls. That ball hard like a fullback just then. Bethea, middle of the field, second touchdown catch of the game and it's 13. Last three, two weeks. This Here's the key, Bethea is comfortable. He's got Dialing up. The, the secondary, he's got the secondary on skates. They don't know where he's gonna throw the ball. And remember last week, it looked like his arm wasn't 100, back to 100%. He is zipping the ball out there today. Cade Hector back on to complete the extra point and give the Wildcats a two score. Remember how fragile the yard fake punt to go down inside. But um, the one rushing play for, they have negative five rushing combined between Williams, Wilson, and Thomas. They have 84 yards receiving. There was that one big 59 yard. They, they called it a reception for Blakely on the fake punt. Yards of Ross, one catch for Bama State game. Been a long time. 12 to go in the second. It's a reverse, but the Wildcats are on. Tackle there as well as. Team play. He blocked the field goal and he reversed it. Ten in quarrels. Looks like number. I couldn't see the reach. 16 yard line going right to left. Green helmets. A great jersey. Quarterback. He takes the snap, puts it in the belt of the running back, reverses field. Run. That, that play was designed to go to the left. He cut back against the. From Greenwood, Mississippi. 18 carries, 221 yards, and two touchdowns on the season coming into the game. Second and five. They give it five yard line. 
good running room that time on a misdirection around the right side. You got an injured player for Mississippi Valley on the field. He's getting up slow. He walls. Jacob Allen is the right tackle for Mississippi Valley State. Fant up the middle, tries to slip through on first and 10. Does dive forward for about six yards up to the 38-yard line. And now the uh, yeah. Delta Devils are getting their rushing offense going here. Defense are getting a little winded, been on the field a lot. Yep. Wildcats giving up 180 yards per game on the ground. Got some, they got four, four guys coming yep. in. Four, four linemen go out, four linemen come in. They do, Wildcats do that a lot. It'll be Jones, Dabula, Cunningham, and Greaves in on the defensive line for BCU. Three linebackers as well. Here's the snap on second and five. Fant delayed handoff right through the middle. First down and more to midfield is Will in Orlando. Pick up the first down for the Delta Devils. Good looking drive for the Delta Devils. They're running it right down our throats and right it's, now. It's all been the run. They, don't ha they haven't thrown the ball on this drive. First and 10 for Valley from midfield. Couldn't see who was on the tackle, on the carry. It was Kobe Thomas again. As I said, a lot of Florida kids all over this uh, Valley State team. He's from Osceola High School. Yeah, that's sure, he's on great. defense, the cornerback. We'll get to him when Valley started all the way back at the... Williams takes the snap. Looks eight-yard line, first down. A nice little just screen play yeah. to the left. Good block by the receiver on that side. He held up two of our DBs. And first and 10, handoff middle to Jacoby Thomas, and he has wrestled back to the 40-yard line, loss of two. Jabari Jowden led the edge from Jowden. There was a receiver wide open if the quarterback mm. wanted to pull that back and throw it because there was a, a two-on-one on the far side against uh, Iverson Clement. Let's hope they didn't see that. <laughs> Second down and 11 from the BCU. Williams takes the snap, looks to throw. Five-man rush. A massive shot did Williams from... Jeremy Greaves, who came unblocked off the edge, but he did get the pass away. Deep cross, and it was caught at the Valley, but it's first down and 10 for the Delta Devils from the Wildcat 26. This is their second trip into the red zone. Delayed handoff, running right to Fabian Fant. Here right now, it he can't stop him. Completely different defense than what we've seen in the first quarter for the Wildcats, where the Delta Devils didn't get anything. They had negative. Greaves, Washington. They gave him seven yards on the carry. Second and three from the 19. Here's the snap. Quarterback draw, nowhere to go. Falls forward for maybe one. He's still pushing the pile, yeah, though. They're going to give him the, the first, first down. Yeah, he got the first down. Second effort. Tigerian Williams using all 6'3", 240 of his frame to push forward for the first down. Looked like they had him stop. The 17-yard line of Bethune-Cookman. Wildcats blocked a field goal last time they were down here. Hoping for another similar stop. This time, Williams under center. Hand off right side and tackled by his ankles. Jared Wilson gains three. And we're just matching up with their, with their guys. See the referee is holding them up. They'll allow us to match up. Yep. A couple of different wide receivers come in for Mississippi Valley. It's a weird. Out to the right. It is. Having to force the Delta Devils into a field goal and still have a two possession lead here early on. for Mississippi Valley from the BCU 14. Watch the quarterback on a roll to the right. It's a new quarter. Right to left, fakes the handoff. Maldonado throws to the back of the end zone. It is knocked away by Omari Hill Robinson in single coverage. That's why you're number one on your jersey and you're number one in the swag as a defensive back. Great he was play. matched up one-on-one -on -one with the tight end Jackson Davis who motioned left to right and then ran out on a on a uh, fade pattern, and he, Omari just out jumped him. Omari is 5'10", Jackson Davis is 6'5", yes. and he out jumped him. He was up there too, and he just went up there and slapped it away. Field goal attempt. Here we, yep. Davis, the freshman from Orlando. The snap is down, the kick is good, up and no, no good. good, missed it wide left. Conroy Cunningham may have got a finger on it. And the Wildcats hold again in the red zone. We talked about last night on the Hill Wildcats show how the defense is really growing and playing together. We saw them drive that football almost 70. Nothing, BCU is 6.56 to go first half. We'll take a timeout and be right back to Daytona Stadium. This is BCU football on the Cata Network in 1380 WELE.
Wildcats on the field on offense. 6.56 to go first half. Wildcats up 14, nothing after the missed field goal by Anthony, or excuse me, by Alexander Davis for Mississippi Valley State. Talik Bethea having a pretty good game. Seven of nine for 58 yards and a touchdown so far is in at quarterback. Two receivers left, single right. Hand off up the middle, Jimmy Robinson pushing forward, trying to move the pile, does get three yards up to the 23. We've been saying this all year. Jimmy bounced that thing to the outside. He has yardage. Yeah. He's running like a fullback up the middle. He just puts his head down and goes right. and doesn't keep his head on a swivel and, and try and find some open yard, space. Four more yards if he wanted to. Second and seven. Another handoff, Robinson up the middle looking for a hole. Again, doesn't bounce it outside, just goes straight. Powell continues to push, blown dead. Two after yard. a gain of five. Two yards short. And it'll be third and two. Now, you've gained three and you've gained five. Do you continue to run the ball here? This time, let uh, Bethea keep it around the end. See what happens. Bethea does have some wheels. 26 carries for 13 yards on the season. Third and two from the 28. Bethea takes the snap. Here's the rush. It is a play action pass over the middle incomplete. Flag. And a flag. He was aiming for DeCarri Allen Johnson on a slap pattern. The pass was broken up by Anthony Blakely, but a late flag does come out. Going to give the Cats the first down up around the 40-yard line. Yeah, and Anthony Blakely, who had that 59-yard. Uh, hold up, hold up, hold yard. up. Hold up. We, got a, we got two flags. Nope, nope, that's one. I think both. Are both guys do it. Okay, against Valley. Yeah, so I think both okay. both back officials threw okay. the flag, so there were two okay. flags on the field okay. before they were for the same play. I was thinking they were going to kind of call holding on us. Yep, uh. so Anthony Blakely engaged too early on Dakari Allen Johnson. I don't hate that play. It's a play action, quick five-yard slant over the middle. We've been looking for that all year. You know, Like I said, they're taking the lead off the playbook this game. We're seeing some uh, stuff we've been, we've been crying to see all year. You definitely feel that there's some urgency, not just from the players, but from the coaching staff as well, that you really kind of get this game. Yeah, yeah and then maybe have that one set up the rest of your season. Mm -hmm. The Wildcats have moved up to the 36. They have not moved the chains though, and now both teams are going back to their maybe respective the, maybe huddles. Maybe the chains are broken. That's been known to happen here at, uh, in Daytona. Sports. I have never seen that before. I've worked all the high school games I've worked, all the Pop Warner games. Okay, oh, so they're challenging that the ball was tipped before contact. I didn't know you could challenge that. That's a that's a that's a new one for me. Okay, let's see. Yeah. Now I know in the in the Canadian Football League you can challenge w uh, a penalty call, a straight up like if you think it wasn't a penalty, or you can challenge if you think there was a penalty and it wasn't called. But only this one because if the ball was tipped, it's not pass interference. Yeah. So, so we will. I don't think that ball was tipped. Now we'll see on the replay if we get one. And uh, right. won't miss your chance to catch Bethune Cookman football at Daytona Stadium this season. The Wildcats have one more home game on November 11th as BCU hosts Alabama AM. Tickets are still available at the BCU box office or at Ticketmaster.com. And the nation's largest HBCU football game is back on November 18th. Come catch your Wildcats as they take on rival Florida A&M in the 43rd annual Florida Blue Florida Classic at Camping World Stadium in Orlando. Tickets are on sale now at Ticketmaster.com. You, know, you know, I heard something about the Classic that kind of shocked me today. I think I know what you're going to say, but continue. This may be the last time you see Florida A&M and Bethune Cookman play in Orlando. People want it home and home. They want it home and home. Fan, you put $6 million into Bragg Stadium. It's beautiful now. They're even hosting the high school state, uh, championships. state championships. But if you go home and home, we'll play them in the Daytona Speedway in front of 52,000 next year. <laughs> would that be, which would is be great. wishful thinking. No, no, no. I it's think, happened before. We played them there twice in the Speedway. But back, you know, before I was paying attention, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But, but that that's uh, – it's, 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 it's in the making. And by that, by that fans, it means before I was born. But right, not not right. before I was matter paying fact, attention we, as a child. Matter of fact, the first game <laughs> ever in the Speedway was against Mississippi Valley. We played Mississippi Valley. had a guy named Willie Totten. The lead, matter of fact, that's the name of the stadium in, 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 in Atlanta. Willie Totten, Totten was, their, stadium. was their quarterback. And we beat them in the Sandals Pearls at the, at the International Speedway. Yep. I mean, you go down the list of Mississippi Valley State great players, you know, 
Deacon Jones, Doug Porter, Willie Todd, and then, of course, the one and only Jerry Rice. Jerry Rice. I saw Jerry Rice. You know, they used to have, before that, the Swike Miak Challenge. That was a Swike Miak All-Star game that they used to play in Atlanta, Fulton County Stadium. And Larry Little was coaching the BCU Wildcats, and we played against the Swike in Atlanta. Jerry Rice caught two touchdowns to, to, to beat the, uh, the Miak. Then the, this Mississippi Valley team has had a lot of traveling this year. They were oh, yeah. up at, in Chicago at the Windy City HBCU Classic against Central State. And then, of course, the Circle City Classic in Indianapolis against North Carolina Central. And I think it, w it was a big shock, right, at the beginning of the season. They went up to Chicago, and Central State beat Mississippi Valley 24-21. A, a lot of the HBCU football community was uh, taken aback by that result. Yeah, you know, Central State's in the SIAC, their Division II school, so that's not much difference in HBCU. Here we go. Here's the results. So the pass was not tipped. The uh, pass interference penalty will stand. It'll be first down and 10 for Bethune-Cookman at their own 36-yard line. And Wildcats got a little bit bailed out there because that was a third and two play, and they chose to pass it after the running game had gotten something a little bit going on this drive. So do they lose the challenge? Is that, was that a challenge? That's a question for, uh, uh, for, for the SID. For, for the SID. Yeah, I, I'm not cool. sure. We can get that during the timeout. Anyway, it's first and 10 for BCU from the 36-yard line going left to right. Bethea in the gun. Two receivers to the short side right. Single left. Akari Allen Johnson comes in motion. It's going to be a handoff. Jimmy Robinson with space up the middle. Bounces off a tackler. 40, 45 still going near midfield down to the 49-yard line. That's a 12, 13-yard pickup. First down, BCU. Best run he's had all season. Yeah. And he did. That's what we've been saying, dude cut to the outside and then cut it back up. And then he starts bouncing off tacklers like a pinball in a machine, and it's very hard to tackle. Uh, Jimmy Robinson, 5'7", 195. Wildcats will go quickly. Three right, single left. Bethea takes the snap, four-man rush. Time in the pocket now throws deep down the right-hand side. Has to Corey Allen Johnson wide open to the 20-yard line. Did he make the catch? He made the catch. He made the catch sliding backwards at the 20. The ball was a little bit underthrown, and D.A.J. came back and slid down to make the grab. You call that a back shoulder pass in the NFL and in college. But there's an injured player on the field, and there's a swike official behind me saying that they do lose the challenge All right, because so of that last It is call. a Mississippi Valley State player that's down. He's up under his own power and walking towards the sidelines. That's good to see. That's DeAndre Clark, Jr., who transferred from Florida A&M to Mississippi Valley. Wow. We saw last week up in Grambling, every <laughs> play, we, we got a lot of yardage. There was a guy laying down on the field. <laughs> Well, anyway, that's a great play. And going back to the touchdown pass from Markai Shaw to Tink Boyd on the trick play, that's the second longest passing play for the Wildcats all season long. The only one that's longer than that was the touchdown pass from Sprague to Omari Stort in Jacksonville. That was only longer by two yards. So you keep that in the playbook, just running from a different formation. Yeah. Timeout on the field. We'll take up one up here. Wildcats in the red zone at the 20 yard line. When we come back, this is BCU football on the Counter Network at 1380 WELE.
Michael Torello and Darren Latio back at Daytona Stadium. The Wildcats have a 14 to nothing lead on the visiting Mississippi Valley State Delta Devils looking for their first conference win of the season. And right before we went to break, Tyleek Bethea hit uh, Dakari Allen Johnson for a big play round the light right hand side for 32 yards that set Bethune Cookman up at their own at the sorry Mississippi Valley 20 yard line. First and 10 for the Wildcats. Tyleek Bethea in at quarterback. Jimmy Robinson, the running back on his left hip. Two receivers to the short side right. That's Jalen Brown and Dakari Allen Johnson. Oh. Jalen Terzato is the lone receiver all the way to the far side of the formation. The Banye Moore is in as a tight end split out to the right in the H-back spot. DAJ comes in motion. It's a handoff up the middle. Robinson cuts it left and is dragged down after a five-yard gain to the 15-yard line. If he makes one more cut there, Daryl, he could be gone. But you know what we haven't done? We haven't given the offensive line credit. We, they're pass blocking and they're run blocking this evening. Yep. And the run blocking has gotten better as they've managed to figure out this MVSU stunt game. Free play, offsides, going to the corner of the end zone. Brown knocked away. Anyways, he was in double coverage, and yeah. I don't blame Bethea for taking a shot there on the free play. And that's a lot of times. That's, I think, the fourth or fifth time this season that we've gotten a free play from an offsides penalty. We saw the free play last week against Gremlin that was offsides and a pass interference, and nothing was called. Yeah. So it'll be a free five yards for Bethune-Cookman. And it will be second down. As they only got four yards on first down, not five. So it's not enough for a first down. It'll be second and one from the 10 yard line. They need the nine. Oh, no, correction. They do give him enough for the first down on the penalty. It depended on the spot. So it'll be first and goal for the Wildcats from the 10. Honestly, I might have preferred second and, and, yeah, and one so from the 11. First down. But hell no. It, it, it's first and 10 from the 10. Hand off up the middle. Robinson trying to cut it back. You know, big scrum in the middle of the field moves the pile all the way down to the four. This is the hardest I've seen this kid run the football all year. Yeah, and considering we've now had three different running backs, and uh, we still have DeAndre McCutcheon in the wings. And oh, no, they, now it is first and goal. Mass confusion everywhere. First and goal for BCU from the four. Snap a hand handoff Robinson, buries his head, trying to move the, ch move the pile forward. He will get one yard to the three, second and goal. So I guess they didn't give him the first down on the last, the chain, on the penalty. Yeah, but the chain gang put the sticks down. It was first and goal. It was first and, well. Yeah, but now it's second and goal, and they've run two plays already. So the chain gang says second and goal from the three. Just hold on to the football, guys. That's all. Now, remember, this was the exact position where they fumbled the ball, and then it was taken 98 yards the other way by Texas Southern. That was the, the difference in the game on homecoming. Second and goal from the three for the Wildcats, looking to extend their 14 point lead here in the second quarter. Snap a Thea, it's a play action over the middle and overthrown. He was looking for uh, Jalen Brown. Brown is 6'6", six, six, but I think he would have need to be 10 foot tall to catch that pass, third and goal. Interesting call there. And, he, and Bethea is trying to call his next play. Is it fourth okay, down? Okay, it is now fourth down we are hearing. It went, the, the chains went from second down to fourth down, and I guess that's why they threw it, because they knew it was third down. There's mass confusion up here. So it was first and goal after the penalty. They rushed it to the four, an incomplete pass, and now it's fourth and goal from the three. Cade Hector on for the field goal. It is up. It is good. good. And with 3.36 to go in the first half, it's Bethune-Cookman 17, Mississippi Valley State nothing. Darrell, will, will we rue that opportunity later in the game, or is it good to get points? It's good to get the points, but you'd like to see them get a touchdown here to go up by 21 late here in the second quarter. And, and even the, the play call on third down, I don't yeah, I, I, I don't didn't like hate. that call at all. I well, like I don't hate it because you've got a guy that's 6'6". Six, if you can get him in position against the corner, put the, ball on him. put the ball on him, but the ball was thrown way over his head. And we will go to break. 3.36 to go first half. Wildcats with a 17-0 lead. Valley gets the ball when we come back. This is BCU Athletics on the Cattle Network and 1380 WELE.
Michael Torello and Daryl Natil back to uh, 336, excuse me, left to go first half. Wildcats scored a field goal from 20 yards away by Cade Hector after a 11-play, 77-yard drive that started on their own 20-yard line. And Cade Hector is set to kick it away. Kobe Chambers and Kobe Bates back to return. Chambers on the far side, Bates on the near side. It is going to go to Chambers at the five yard. Let it drop the ball. It's loose at the 15 yard line. He's gonna pick it up and they'll be swarmed down right there. Jeremy Greaves, first man to him. Couple of more steps. Greaves could have had that football, man. Yeah, that was close. And I wonder, uh, we saw Dino Maldonado, the transfer quarterback from New Mexico State, the senior. I wonder if we'll see him more or they're going to go back to Tigerian Williams. Let's see when they come out of the huddle. It'll be first and 10 for Mississippi Valley from their own 15-yard line. That The last play, the last drive, rather, for Mississippi Valley was very good. They missed a field goal at the end of it, but it was 14 plays, 70 yeah. yards that started on their own 16. So they're right back where they were before. Yeah, Dino is back in the game. Let's see if the Wildcats can hold this time on defense. It is Dino Maldonado, a quarterback for the Delta Devils. Three receivers bunched to the left. Nobody out to the right. Delayed handoff up the middle. Shelton Quarrel says absolutely not. No gain on the play. Uh, how hard does Shelton Quarles play, man? He has some motor on him. Yeah, you know, these kids are undersized, man. And, and they, they, every play, they have to really give an effort just to get in there. And he stopped them cold. That was Jared Wilson on the handoff. They still bunch three receivers to the right. Now one to the left as well. The tight end goes in motion. Now cuts back to the right. Maldonado under pressure escapes up to the 15. Running right, 15, gets a block 20, 22 yard line. So an eight yard run off. I'm not sure if that was a design quarterback draw or he just escaped as he the got, pocket broke he down. He got flushed out of the pocket. Good run. He has better wheels than the other quarterback. Yeah, Maldonado, also a track athlete for St. Joseph's High School in Santa Maria, California. It's gonna be third down and two for Mississippi Valley, Tigerian Williams is back at Full quarterback. Full house backfield. Full house backfield, Williams under center. It's going to be a handoff right side, trying to stretch oh, the edge, and the runner fell down. Turf monster. Turf monster come up and bit Carrick Ross. The wide receiver took the direct snap and then ran around to the right. They, so they showed dive and then tried to run it to the right on the direct snap, and the wide receiver fell down. And timeout Bethune-Cookman to stop the clock with two minutes and 10 seconds on the clock. Good call by yeah. Coach Woody there, call a timeout. Good call, you had your timeouts in your pocket, so you, what you wanna do now is stop the clock. You got a two minute drill. You're gonna get the ball on this, hopefully on this side of the 50 yard line, if, you, if you're gonna get off a good punt. Yep. Opportunity for more points. It will be fourth down and they lost one, two, three, four, five. They've lost six yards on the play, watch so it's the gonna fake. be fourth down. Yeah, watch the <laughs> fake. That's the best play of the game. They got 59 yards on that fake punt. Um, Total yards for Mississippi Valley. They have eight first downs and 108. 148 total yards and 59 of them were on one play, the punt. Here is Anthony Turnage to punt for Mississippi Valley. Darnell D stands at the 45 yard line of BCU. He gets the punt away from the 15 yard line. It's high, spiraling kick. It's going to bounce at the 40 yard line and be picked up. Oh, oh no! The ball went through the legs of the returner. You got it. And Takari Allen Johnson does eventually pick it up, stays on his feet, rolls back, and falls forward at the 37 yard line. Almost disaster for the Wildcats. Here's why he did that. Last week, the, the, on the, the punting game for Grambling was so good that the return man got a lot of flack by not picking that football up as it, as it bounced to the one-yard line. He even did a fair catch at the two-yard line, so he was pressured to get that football. Dakari Allen Johnson, whoo. Yeah, he was pressured. <laughs> he dropped that ball, but somehow picked it up. The first guy to it for Mississippi Valley overran, overran the ball, yeah. and that allowed him to get back to it. So another Wildcats, okay. 156 to go, two timeouts from their own 38-yard line going left to right. Three receivers in a diamond formation to the right. One receiver all the way to the far side left. But Thea takes the snap. Late pressure coming. He's going to throw the ball near side. It's going to be caught near the 50-yard line. 
in traffic by Tink yep. Boyd. Took a big shot, but he did hang on to the ball. Inbounds, though, got a first down at the 48-yard line. Got exactly 10 yards of the clock. Stops to move the chains. Right now it starts... Seat. Now it starts again, 145. Bethea takes the snap. Pump fakes, now throws down the field towards Terzato. Did Terzato make that catch? Oh catch. my goodness. He went up and mossed the cornerback right along the near sideline. That was Vaughn Killens, who he just robbed. We're actually seeing a two minute drill run to perfection by Bethea. Highway robbery by Jalen Terzato. He made the catch along the sideline. Excuse me, it wasn't Killens, it was Flakewood Tucker, the corner guarding him. And it can't be challenged because they lost their last challenge. That's true. So the Wildcat, unless it's a booth-initiated review, which they can do because it's outside the no, last two minutes. Let's run this play. 136 to go. Clock now runs. First and 10 for Bethune-Cookman from the Valley 22. Snap Bethea. Three-man rush. Time in the pocket. Bethea escapes to his right, looking downfield. Now he'll throw it. Incomplete. Just looking for the check down to Dakari Allen Johnson, and the clock stops with 124 left. This is the Talik Bethea we were looking to get when he transferred as a graduate student from Delaware State. This is the best he's looked this season. Originally from Brooklyn, New York, Bethea. Former NYC City Offensive Player of the Year at Abraham Lincoln High School. 3,500 yards and 38 touchdowns as a high school athlete. Mm -mm -mm. Second and 10 from the 22. Two receivers left, two to the right. Bethea takes the snap, extra pressure from Valley. Bethea escapes out the back door to the 20. Now he slides down to the 18-yard line. I think BCU might use one of their last two timeouts now with a minute 15 left, clock still runs. It's important, now third down and eight from the 18-yard line. It's important to not turn the ball over here and get a field goal because you are in field goal range. Third and eight from the 18. Bethea looks to the sideline to get the snap. 17 on the play clock, 51 on the game clock. Two receivers stacked up to each side on the numbers. Bethea takes the snap. Plenty of time to throw. Now he throws toward the end zone. It's a diving uh, incompletion. It was almost picked by Valley. That was a bad choice. You had a back right down in the, in, in, right in the front of him. Omar Emmons, the sophomore from Greenwood, Mississippi, dove in the back of the end zone and almost picked that off. And we're going to see the Field goal unit led by Cade Hector out here. He's hit a 45-yarder this year. This will be a 35-yarder. Ethan Dettilio will hold. The long snapper is Clayton Thomas. 35-yard field goal. The snap is good. The kick is on the way. And he missed it wide to the left. It's been a tough year for Cade Hector. Now four of eight, 50% on his field goals with a long of 45. He's had two of them blocked. And with 37 seconds left to go, the lead still is Bethune-Cookman 17, Mississippi Valley nothing. Well, we've seen the offense wake up tonight. We've seen the defense play stiller. But let's, 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 let's enjoy what we've seen here in the first half and come back in the second half and continue to play great football. Now, if you're Mississippi Valley, you're on the 20-yard line, 80 yards to go, 37 seconds. You have one timeout. You have no challenges. Do you just run this and go to the half, or do you try to get something? Uh, they're, like, they're gonna try to throw the football. They're spreading it out right here. Well, that's their modus operandi. They spread the ball. They spread the field basically on every snap with four or five wide. It is Williams at quarterback. They're extracting Maldonado. Maldonado gets crushed as he throws. The ball's caught at the 40-yard line far side. Out of bounds at the 42. That was complete to number 85 for Mississippi down. Valley. We got a flag. I think we're going to have roughing the pass or two. Yeah, Dontrell Green, the tight end, made the catch. And now they're going to review it for targeting. I did see Maldonado get crushed as he let go of that ball, but it looked like his arm was still in motion as he got hit. It, uh, the ball is out when he gets hit. That's Eddie Walls, and if we lose Eddie Walls, that's a big blow. And he would be out for the first half against Alabama a and next week too. The replay angle is not great. I'll watch this one more time on the replay monitor here in the press box. 
The ball is away. No, he didn't hit him in the head. Yeah, I'm not even sure no, that's supposed property. to be a penalty because mm -mm. the ball is away, but there's no, he can't move. Like, he was about to get, Maldonado was about to get hit anyway. It's not like there's anything Walls could have done. His momentum was going to carry him into him. But they are going to check this for targeting on Eddie Walls on a roughing the passer penalty after a completion of about 20 yards. The clock has 29 seconds left to go in the first half. The Wildcats have a 17-0 lead. Mississippi Valley one timeout. If this penalty stands, they'll move that ball up, I think, past midfield where it is now. Yeah, they'll move it to around the BCU 45. And it almost looked like the offensive lineman for Mississippi Valley pushes walls into Maldonado. That's Devin Pitts, the right guard. So we shall see what happens. The referees are still conferring with the replay booth, which is, funnily enough, right across the little wall from where we are. But, of course, we can't hear what they're saying nor see what they're looking at. But you've seen the replays, Daryl. What do you think? I think they're going to, they're gonna, um, if they're looking for a targeting helmet to helmet, it's not there. But if it's uh, roughing the passer, it's going to be a 15-yard. Really? They're going to attack it on. You think it's going to be a roughing the passer penalty? Because, if, because I can't see it. If he didn't hit him in the helmet, it's not targeting, so it's going to have to be yeah. rough in the pass. And he didn't lower his head into him either. Mm -mm. I still think that, that the roughing the passer penalty is a bit harsh in itself, but we shall see. Pretty decent crowd here for a Thursday night in Daytona Beach. It's a little bit cool out. Weather in the upper 60s. So I got a lot of people in their jackets. and A lot of people overcoats. at home watching ESPNU. Yeah. You can watch the game on ESPNU, but if you please, if you do that, please sync our radio feed with the TV. You can continue listening to us here on the Cat Eye Network. Speaking of football, the next BCU football game is November 11th. Oh, here's the. So no targeting, yes, roughing the passer. But BCU football continues Southwestern Athletic Conference next Saturday, November 11th. For a matchup with the Alabama AM Bulldogs. That game will be broadcast live on HBCU Go. Can't watch. You can listen to the action live at youtube.com backslash cattle network or locally in Daytona Beach at 1380 WELE. So they'll move the ball all the way, tack on 15 yards after the catch to the Bethune Cookman 43. Bring some pressure here. Yeah, ball on the 43 yard line for Mississippi Valley. First and 10. 29 seconds to go in the first half. The Devils do have one timeout. Three receivers left, bunched one to the right. Maldonado being forced back to his left. Stands, plants, throws down the middle. Incomplete. Darnell Dees ripped the ball out of Jackson Davis's hands. We're seeing good secondary play tonight. You know, the secondary has been suspect sometimes during the season, but the guy's playing tough back there tonight. Second and 10, 19 seconds left. 10 seconds went off the clock on that last play for Mississippi Valley. Dino Maldonado, the transfer from New Mexico State, before that Portland State, before that Ventura Community College. He's been he, everywhere. He's been everywhere. That's good. <laughs> you got some miles, buddy. Is in at quarterback. Two receivers spread out to the far side, near side, left. The far side is the right side. That's the short side, excuse me. The near side, left, is the... Wide side of the field, ball right hash. Maldonado in the gun with Wilson on his right hip. He takes the snap. He's forced backwards. He throws. Intercepted at the 30-yard line by Steven Sparrow. He's got a convoy, 45-50. Flag. flag on the play. There's a flag back at the 30-yard line, and I think this is going to be the second BCU interception negated by pass interference. Maldonado floated it down the left sideline. He was looking for Kendrick Ross. And it was picked off by Steven Sparrow. The pass was underneath. And it looks like this is going to be the second BCU interception negated for, by a penalty. Maldonado floated at left side. It was just Sparrow one-on-one -on -one with Ross. 
And it looks like they're gonna get Sparrow for a push off and the defense is coming back out for BCU. Yeah, they got Sparrow for a push off. He extended his right hand to move the receiver out of the way and then went up and made the interception. That's- You can't give up any points here. That's, that's a gut punch for BCU. That's second interception. They've, they've got three interceptions. Only one of them's counted. Two pass interference penalties. Still 12 seconds left on the clock. That'll move the ball. Spot of the foul penalty to the 33 yard line. I'm not sure that's in the kicking range of Alexander Davis is long on the year. He's 44. Okay, let's hold him right here. 12 seconds to go. Maldonado in the gun. Four receivers in the formation. He takes the snap, floats it down the left sideline. It is incomplete. In double coverage was the receiver. And I believe Jabari Jowden was the man that knocked it away. Yeah, we're playing twin safeties back there, and they just, they're just they just dropping deep and reacting to the pass. So. It was just a straight go route from uh, Jackson Davis. Is the tight, he's listed as a tight end. He's, he's always all the way out on the numbers on the left-hand side. They're using him as a wide receiver. This is a huge play here. Seven, Seven seconds. seconds. They, they might just take a shot for the end zone here. Out of field goal range at the 33. And yeah, the play clock is at five, too. One timeout left for Mississippi Valley. Three seconds. They do snap, and it's going to be a run up the oh. middle. Wildcats weren't expecting it. 30 down at the 22-yard line. Or, sorry, 25-yard line. Uh, they're going to stop it with a second. Send the field goal unit out. So Mississippi Valley is going to take a timeout with two seconds left in the first half. That was a, a draw on second and 10. Wildcats were completely expecting a pass. They got eight yards out of it. A good call, bad call, Darrell. That was a good call, even though you had a timeout left. You know, you got the home clock. You should have let the clock run out. But. <laughs> <laughs> well, anyway, it's going to be a Alexander Davis field goal attempt. It's going to be what? 42. 42 yards? From an angle. The ball is on the, towards the right hash. Davis, just a freshman from Orlando, Florida has been used more than as a puncher than a kicker this season. Let's see what he's got. He's already one blocked and missed one left. Snap, hold, kick, on the way, and no, no good. good. It was short. He has missed three kicks in the first half. One left, one blocked, one short. He missed that one toward I-4, toward where he lived. <laughs> and the Wildcats will take a 17 to nothing lead into the half, but Darrell, this game could easily be 17 to nine and, the Val and Mississippi Valley State has all the, the right in the world to think they're still in it. Yeah, they are still in the ball game. You know, we shot ourselves in the foot with the uh, pass interference calls on the interceptions we've had, but great first half for the Cats. We saw the offense open up a little bit. We even saw our first trick play of the season. Cats go up 17 to nothing at the half. Reminder, coming up at the half, we'll have the halftime reports from Dan Ryan on the 1970s BCU football team. And of course, you'll hear the interview that we were not able to get to in the pregame show, as well as the opponent report that we were not able to get to in the pregame show. So that's all coming up on BCU Halftime. We send it to the studio. Here's Larry Steele. It's halftime, people. You know what that means. We get to talk to Dan Ryan, a historian here at the great Bethune-Cookman University. Another strong showing for the 1973 team. Of course, we're celebrating 50 years of that team. So, Dan, tell us the good, the bad, and the ugly. Well, there wasn't a lot of ugly in this one, but I guess we got the ugly out of the way from the last two weeks with the uh, homecoming. Well, homecoming losses are ugly. That's the only ugly we're going to talk about. Jackson State was just one of those things. This is uh, definitely 
definitely a rebound performance this week, 50 years ago. But then Cookman, 32, Alabama State, nothing. Now, uh, what's more, still looking ahead to that big SIEC championship game in a couple weeks against Florida A&M. Played a lot of people this week, and this guy uh, week was was Leopold Starling. He was a freshman. He had 109 yards, scored two touchdowns. This number was a game, 19 nothing at halftime. Uh, Wesley Moore cleared his bench. Um, Willie Collins, of course, had a touchdown. And then uh, Terry Anderson, uh, freshman at, at this time. I mean, I think of him as when he was in the NFL Cardinals later on. He scored the last touchdown. Wildcats go to 6-2. and two, And like I said, getting ready for the Florida A&M game later on that month. Wow. Wow. That's what you call coming back from two losses. Great stuff, Dan. No problem. All right. Dan Ryan, our historian here at BCU. Thanks a lot, Dan. Thank you. Rubber duckies on your mark. Get set. Go! 5,000 rubber ducks will race at the Riverfront Esplanade in downtown Daytona Beach. Adopt your duck today and you can win $2,500 first prize, $1,000 for second place, and $500 for third. The best part is 40% of your purchase goes to support scholarships at Bethune-Cookman University. Visit www.duckrace.com forward slash Daytona Beach and select BCU in the Teams tab. Do it today. Participants don't need to be present on race day to win, but we'd love to see you there. This event supports the Greater Daytona Beach Kiwanis. The event takes place Sunday, November 5th at the Riverfront Esplanade. Just in walking distance from downtown Daytona Beach. Remember, when you purchase your duck, 40% of your purchase goes to support scholarships at Bethune-Cookman University. Visit www.duckrace.com forward slash Daytona Beach and select BCU in the Teams tab. Wildcats, get ready for the big splashdown. Sunday, January 14th at 7.30 at the Peabody in Daytona Beach. R&B legends Russell Tompkins Jr. and the New Stylistics. And Harold Melvin's Blue Notes. Tickets and info at PeabodyAuditorium.org. On sale now. Hit after soulful stylistics and Blue Notes hits. Another Music Works concert. So now we have a major event, the Florida Classic. The Florida Blue, Florida Classic's coming up. Yes. And it, it's a major event, but I, I don't want to spoil this, but you're having an admission session, so I want you to explain it and tell us what's going on. <laughs> you, I know you're excited you can't, about it. I am excited. You can't spoil it at all, my friend. Tell it, tell it, tell it. <laughs> <laughs> announcement, announcement. We are hoping that everyone that is listening to this will join us uh, for our information session that is going to be the morning of our Florida Classic. Uh, that is the largest... Black College Football Classic in the nation, I should add. Yes. We will be at the Shingle Rosen Creek uh, Hotel, uh, which is the host hotel uh, for us uh, mm. there in Orlando uh, for BCU. Mm. Uh, and we will have an information session that begins at 9 a.m. that morning. And we are going to be uh, joined by our president, uh, Dr. William Berry, who's going to share some uh, words of encouragement, a little bit about our institution. Mm -hmm. uh, we also will have our student royalty that's going to be a part of that. Our Mr. and Miss BCU in the Royal Court will have student leadership. Also, SGA will be joining us, student body, our student government association, uh, rather. They're going to be a part of that as well. Mm -hmm. And so you'll get that perspective. Uh, we'll have an alumni perspective that's going to be shared. You'll get an admissions uh, presentation about the details of admissions, financial aid information will be shared as well. But the best part, perhaps, uh, is free tickets uh, to the Classic. Uh, each participant will get three free tickets to join us that afternoon as we whoop them rattlers uh, <laughs> and take the victory back. The bell is going off continuously. Did you say free? I did indeed. Free, my friend. We want them to experience what you said earlier, the fullness of the black college experience. Yes. The yes. bands, the crowd, the alumni. Yes. I mean, it is just going to be a full show and we want them to truly experience what that's like so 
three free tickets to each participant that joins us for our information session. And can I get a date? The date of the Florida Classic is... I don't yes, know. November the 18th. November the 18th. That's, That's right. That's a Saturday. That's a Saturday. That's it. And time? So, again, we will start at 9 a.m. Mm -hmm. at the Shingle Rosen Creek. You can register for this information session mm -hmm. on our website. Go to www.cookman.edu. Again, that's www.cookman.edu. When you're there, you'll see right on the banners that are going across the screen, the Florida Classic Admissions Session. Click there, and you'll be able to go right into the registration for it, and it'll give you all the details. To hear more about the admissions session with Dr. Anthony E. Jones, Vice President of Enrollment Management and Student Experience, go to our website at www.wele1380thecat.com. Now, back to TIAA Bank Stadium in Jacksonville, Florida, with the voice of the Wildcats, Mike Torello, for today's game between the Southern Jaguars and your Bethune-Cookman Wildcats on the Cat Eye Network. It's Wildcat Central. It's halftime. That means it's time to talk to historian extraordinaire, Mr. Dan Ryan, who is on the phone once again to talk about the 1973 team. Dan, I understand we played one of the... Welcome back to the Press Box at Daytona Stadium. It is halftime here with the Wildcats leading the Mississippi Valley State Delta Devils 17 to nothing. We had our pregame show cut short, so we did not get to our interview with Darnell Dees. Here that is for you, though. Darnell Dees, I spoke to him early on about his return game and how he wants to be targeted more in the return game this year. I'm here with Darnell Dees before the Wildcats take on the Mississippi Valley State Delta Devils uh, back at home after the last road trip. Talk about the game against Grambling real quick. Last road trip, tough game, costal environment, uh, kind of got away from you in the fourth quarter. Um, what were your thoughts on the game? Uh, I got to feel like we could have executed better. And came home with a victory, for sure. Like we definitely supposed to have that game. You looking forward to being at home this week instead of traveling seemingly every week? Yes, <laughs> about time. <laughs> Been traveling for the last three to four weeks. It feel good to be back home. Take me back to last season. Um, All conference returner. Seemed like every time you touched the ball, uh, you were getting big chunk yardage and. Um, this season, it seems like teams have kind of honed in on you a little bit, kicking the ball away from you, kicking it out of bounds. And what's the, ch the challenge been like in that regard? I hate it. <laughs> I hate it. I've been wanting more returns for sure. I feel like I got a couple more games to still show. I got a couple more games to still show. I'm going to get one, though. For sure, I'm going to get one. You got one every year. I wouldn't put it past you to get <laughs> one sure. this year. Talk about uh, Mississippi Valley. Last year, game got a little bit. Testy there in the fourth quarter. It was high scoring. It was back and forth. Do you expect something similar again this year? No way. I like us. Yeah, I like <laughs> us. No way. For sure. <laughs> On defense, you kind of been in and out of the, the lineup at safety this year. You figure to start this week. Uh, what's working with the defensive staff been like this year? Uh, 
I like the coaching. Coach, coach is pretty good. It was pretty good on this end. Thank you. Good luck this week. Thank you. Thank you. There are a lot of similarities between the state of the BCU football program and the team standing on the opposite sideline from them tonight. The Mississippi Valley State Delta Devils are also celebrating a major football anniversary, it being 70 years since they first took the field in 1953. They're also under the direction of a first-year head coach that used to play for the team, Kendrick Wade, who's looking to restore his alma mater to its former gridiron glory. And oh, how glorious those days were for the Delta Devils when players like Deacon Jones, Doug Porter, Willie Totten, and of course the great Jerry Rice donned their red and green uniforms. But those days are long past and the Devils have not had a winning season since 2006. Let's find out how the current iteration of MVSU football is faring in the week nine edition of the opponent report. Mississippi Valley State is one and seven on the year and one and four in SWAC play. The Delta Devils are losers of back-to-back -back contests, scoring just nine points in games against Jackson State and at Alcorn. MVSU also took back-to-back -back losses versus a pair of Division II schools in Central State and Delta State to open up the season. The Delta Devils' lone win came against Arkansas Pine Bluff with them jumping on the Golden Lions 42-17 and homecoming in Itabena. The Delta Devils rank near the bottom of the SWAC in nearly all offensive categories. They're lost last in the conference in points per game to 12.6 and touchdowns with 13. Second last in rushing yards per game, 101.4. Passing yards per game, 140.8 and offensive efficiency at 104.1. Jared Wilson leads MVSU on the ground, averaging just over 36 yards per game with a pair of rushing scores. Quarterback Tigerian Williams has completed 94 passes for 869 yards and four touchdowns, also has four interceptions. Carrick Ross is his leading receiver, 218 yards and a pair of touchdowns. Defensively, MVSU is middle of the pack, allowing just over 28 points per game in eight games, despite having allowed the fifth most rushing yards and third most passing yards per game. The Delta Devils only have 10 sacks as a team this season. Junior linebacker Jaron Fox leads the team with 58 total tackles, six and a half tackles for loss, two sacks, and a hurry. Quarter, uh, sophomore DB Omar Emmons, who broke up a uh, BCU pass in the end zone and almost had a pick in the first half, has a pair of picks and two forced fumbles. That's the opponent report for week nine. Once again, it's BCU 17, MVSU nothing here at halftime at Mississippi Valley State. Let's bring back Daryl Latiel. Daryl, your thoughts on a very kind of up and down first half. Yes, the Wildcats have a 17 point lead, but it could have been a lot more. Yeah, you know, we struggled this year and we looked for um, Talik Bethea to carry us in the first half and he did that. You know, we opened up the passing game a lot and we, we run the ball better than we have early in the season. So we had a balanced attack in the first half. We left some points on the field but our defense has been playing lights out. Those guys have played well inside the 20-yard line, four, some, four field goals, one block, three were missed. So the catch right now sitting good, but they must sustain a defensive stop here coming out in the, in the, in the, in the first part of the third quarter. So we have a, a update for you. I have been calling number six, the quarterback for Mississippi Valley State, Dino Maldonado. That is incorrect. It is Jaden Sisk, 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 the freshman from DeSoto, Texas, who has been at quarterback and not Maldonado. It makes sense because that kid is only 5'11", and, and Maldonado is 6'2", so. Yeah, but uh, a bit of confusion with, <laughs> yep. between us, the Valley radio crew, the Valley SID, the ESPN crew. There's a, a, lot of, a lot of information flying around here in the yep. press box. Let's take a look at your out-of-town scoreboard. Not many scores to report, this being the Thursday game, only game in the SWAC on a Thursday. But coming up Saturday, Alabama A&M hosts Florida A&M. Alcorn hosts Southern in that that, that game is basically the SWAC West title game, if they had such a thing, Alcorn and Southern. Texas Southern goes to Jackson State. Prairie View hosts Pine Bluff, and Bama State hosts Grambling State. Correction, FAMU plays Bama A&M before Bama a &M, a m comes here. here. But here's the thing, you know, FAMU beat Southern so far this season. Southern leads the Western Division. Could there be a rematch, or could Alcorn, Alcorn, don't Speaking say Alcorn. You've now, got al you, always Alcorn. You got, always Alcorn. You got Brian it. Harvey. Uh, he's standing up looking at us right now. <laughs> always Alcorn. <Yeah. laughs> he pointed at you with a smile. Uh, a couple of college football games that were done already on when on Tuesday. Northern Illinois lost to Central Michigan in the snow up in uh, Michigan, 37-31. 
Buffalo lost to Toledo 31-13 on Wednesday. Bowling Green beat Ball State 24-21 on a last-second field goal. That was a great game. And Arkansas State, excuse me, Akron beat Kent State 31-21. Three games going on tonight. TCU and Texas Tech, Wake Forest and Duke, and South Alabama and Troy. I will get you those scores uh, shortly. And uh, <coughs> Friday, Boston College and Syracuse, Colorado State and Wyoming. Those are the two games on Saturday. Sunday, a lot going on. Ohio State Rutgers, Kansas State, Texas. That's a big matchup in the Big Ten. Texas A&M, Ole Miss, Notre Dame, Clemson, Tennessee, UConn, Florida, Arkansas. I'll be up there on uh, Saturday, my day off. Wisconsin, Indiana, Nebraska, Michigan State, Utah, Arizona State, Air Force, Army, Georgia, Missouri is a top 12 matchup. Number two, Georgia, number 12, Missouri. Number four, Florida State at Pittsburgh, Oklahoma, Oklahoma State. It is bedlam for the maybe the final time as Oklahoma moves to the SEC. And Penn State and Maryland, Louisville and Virginia Tech. Tulane and East Carolina, James Madison and Georgia State and UCF at Cincinnati. That's just some yeah. of the games. Oh, let's go out to the West Coast. LSU, oh, I completely forgot. Washington and USC, that's a ranked matchup. LSU at Alabama, that's a ranked matchup. Oregon State at Colorado and UCLA at Arizona are your ranked games out West. But you got a lot of teams playing hard now because they're trying to get those those victories. But you get five, five wins, you're bowl eligible now? Uh, it's six, six wins, wins, but if not enough teams get to six wins, then some teams at five and seven get in. And, of course, I, as a, a James Madison fan, the uh. bowl ban this year because they're still transitioning from FCS. They're undefeated. They're ranked 23rd in the country. Can't go to a bowl game. Wow. And the only way they get there is by enough teams not be getting to six wins so there's spots to fill. So you guys didn't have to pay the $5 million to get in? No. Nope. Well, we, we transitioned before that rule Woo. was in place. The Dukes. The Dukes. Here are some of the live scores from the games going on right now. If I can find them. No, it's only showing me top 25 scores. Maybe I'll get to that in the third quarter. 153 before we go back to live. Uh, the teams are out of the tunnels and moving around on the field. Bethune Cookman in the gold helmets, black jerseys, black pants, gold stripes on the shoulders and down the sides with gold numbers. And maroon trim and trim down the helmet and Bethune on one side of the helmet, the numbers on the other side. Mississippi Valley State green. Helmets with a red stripe down the middle and the interlocking VS logo on those helmets. Gray jerseys, gray pants, white numbers with green trim, a green stripe down the pants, and green shoulder pads for Valley. It will be Mississippi Valley to receive the opening kickoff of the second half. And you mentioned an important to, fa to start fast excuse me, on defense. Absolutely. We've put up a, a goose egg on the board in the first half. What could we do better, though? What we can do better is sustain our drives instead of getting threes, get seven. And I'm looking down at, at, on the sideline, and, and Bethea, he has a little bounce in his step, a little confidence, you know, throwing the football. And I think we can continue to throw the ball and run the ball. It's 0-0. Yeah. Zero, zero. yeah it, it, and it could be 28 nothing easily right now. We kicked two, f kicked two field goal attempts, made one, missed another one. If we put both of those in the end zone, yeah. It's 28 nothing, and this game is pretty much done and dusted. But right now it's 17 nothing, and Mississippi Valley State, with how they moved the ball, especially in that second quarter, can think we're still in this game. Yeah, they moved the football up until they got into the red zone. And in the red zone, our defense stiffens up. We've seen better play out of our secondary than I've seen in, in a couple of weeks. So they've, they've been throwing the football. Our pass rush has been key also. Here's some team stats from that first half. Both teams had 11 first downs. Mississippi Valley, 23 carries, 57 yards. Bethune-Cookman, 13 carries for 60 yards. 4.6 yards a carry for Bethune-Cookman. That's double their season average of 2.4. 11 receptions, 172 yards for Bethune-Cookman. 7 receptions, 145 yards for Mississippi Valley. Valley averaging 20 yards a catch. <laughs> yeah, they've been throwing the ball deep. Yep. Of course, but they have not got it in the end zone. Three big red zone holds from Bethune-Cookman forced a two missed field goals and a block. And here we go. Cade Hector getting set to kick the ball off. The red cap still on the field. At the 35-yard line going right to left. Kobe Chambers and Kobe Bates are back deep to receive for Mississippi Valley. You're kicking with the wind. Maybe you can put this ball in the end zone. Correction, it's... Um, 
Carrick Ross is back deep to receive. The ball will go to his side of the field. It's caught at the two yard line, he'll bring it out. Five, it's gonna be a reverse. No, he kept the ball. He fooled everybody. Right hand side, 30. Down to the 35, wrestled down near the 40. They faked the reverse. They ran it earlier in the game. This time they faked it. He, he didn't pitch the ball to Rashad Eads. Yeah, and, and we ran out, out of our lanes too, chasing the reverse guy. <laughs> I'll tell you what, from the fake punt to the reverse to the fake reverse, there's all sorts of trickery from this Mississippi Valley team tonight. And when you're winning seven, you, you, you'll try anything to try to get something going. 172 pass yards to 145 in the first half for BCU. Valley's turned the ball over twice, one interception, one fumble. BCU's turned the ball over once on a fumble. And then, of course, BCU had those two interceptions that didn't stand because of pass interference. First and 10 for the 40. Handoff wide open, 50 midfield, contacted 11 yards down the field, first down for Mississippi Valley State. And see, that's what I was talking about. You got to come out and sustain defense early here in the third quarter because they found something in the second quarter. They're going to come back too. That's DeFabian Fance. He carries the ball again, looking for some space up the middle. This time he's going to be wrestled backwards. He keeps trying to push the pile forward. He'll get two yards up to the 45-yard line. Jeremy Greaves there to make the stop. Ebenezer Dabula also in there for Bethune-Cookman. We can't come in lax on defense because we have a lead. You got to play tough right here. They're across the 50-yard line in Wildcat territory. Who's in at quarterback for Mississippi Valley? Their uniforms don't have TV numbers. It is Tigerian Williams. Williams takes the snap, puts it in fans' belly. No, keeper. he keeps it. And this is Sisk, the quarterback, not Williams. He gets all the way to the 30-yard line. Again, yep. the trickery. The Wildcats are confused on defense. That's a about a 20-yard run all the way to the 30-yard line. Jaden Sisk, the freshman from DeSoto, Texas. We were calling him Dino Maldonado in the first half. That is an, uh, uh, we apologize for that. It is Sisk. Sisk takes the snap. This time he does hand it off, going left, and blown up in the backfield is DeFabian Fant. Walls got there first, he couldn't make the tackle, and uh, Dearest Thomas finished him off all the way back at the 45 yard, mm -hmm. 40, excuse me, 35, five yard loss on the first play. Good defensive play that time, Walls snuffed it out and made a tackle in the backfield for a loss. DeFabian Fant was injured on the play. He'll go out. Jared Wilson, the graduate transfer from South Alabama, comes in. They said it was a four-yard loss, so second and 14 from the 34-yard line of BCU for Mississippi Valley going left to right. Three receivers left, single right. Fakes the handoff, throwing over the middle. Wide open is the tight end all the way down to the 15-yard line, Jackson Davis. Good looking drive, Mississippi Valley. They, they were driving like this in the latter part of the second quarter. And they just couldn't finish the couldn't drive. Couldn't finish. Yeah, they found something. Just quick play action, drew the safety in, and a quick strike over the middle for another 20 yard gain. Now at the 20 yard line, first and 10. Three left, single right ball, left hash. Handoff up the middle. Wilson cuts left, and he's going to be tackled near the 10 yard line. So an eight yard gain on first down. That's too much. Correction, the, the line of scrimmage was the 15. They got to the 10, so that's a five yard gain. And the Wildcats not up to it right now. They've come out very slow out of the gate in the second half. Got to learn how to finish, guys. And that's been the Wildcats struggle all year. They've played close games pretty much every game in conference play and just have not gotten over the line yet. Sisk takes the snap. Play action, throws to the end zone, over through the receiver and incomplete. He was looking for Jackson Davis again. Davis, just the freshman from Glen Heights, Texas and DeSoto High School, 6'5", 210. Yeah, here's a big play, it's third down and five. We can stop mm -hmm. him here and force another field goal. Maybe they'll go for it this time. And could you imagine that uh, Jackson Davis played basketball in high school and was a, a first team All-State basketball yeah, player yeah. at 6'5"? Yeah, he had, <laughs> he had some leap. 11.48 to go, third quarter. Third down and five. Handoff, middle, pushing through the first line. First down and more to the five, pushing towards the goal line. Down at the one, it'll be first and goal at the one. And that's the, the left guard, James Wilson. Okay. In at running back and he powered forward. He has 13 carries for 50, 56 yards and a touchdown coming into the game. They go quickly, handoff, right side touchdown. Jared Wilson came back in as a running back and scores for Mississippi Valley, and just like that, 
three, less than three minutes off the clock in the third quarter, and Mississippi Valley is on the board. You know, I was afraid this was going to happen. You know, coming out of the halftime, we were a little sluggish, and this team just drove it, what, four, 70 yards down the field. Well, hopefully this wakes us up. Alexander Davis on for the extra point. He must be shaking at his shoes right now. Having missed two and had one blocked. This time it is up and good. So with 11.23 to oh, go got, in the oh, flag. flag on the play. There's a Wildcat down well after the play. 11.23 to go in the third quarter. Got Wildcats a with a 17-7 lead. We got a ball game now. Yeah, we, we have not gone to break yet because there's a flag on the play. We will go to break. And we'll, it's going to be unsportsmanlike on Mississippi Valley. And we'll go to break when we come back. It's Wildcat football on the kickoff. This is BCU Athletics on the Cat Network and 1380 WELE. Eleven twenty-three to go in the third quarter. Mississippi Valley State is on the board as BCU leads at seventeen to seven. Valley scored that pl uh, touchdown in seven uh, nine plays. Excuse me, covering sixty yards in three minutes and twenty-nine seconds, ending with a one-yard touchdown run for Jared Wilson, his third of the season. There was an unsportsmanlike conduct penalty on Mississippi Valley after the extra point which pushes the kickoff all the way back to the 20 yard line. So let's see if Bethune Cookman can uh, get some decent field position out of this and try to respond early on in this second half. Yeah, you got Dees and uh, Kari Johnson back deep. Dees at the 20, Johnson at the 25 near side. Dees like on the far up side. For an onside kick looks like. I, maybe, I wouldn't put it past Valley right now. Ball spotted at the 20 yard line after the penalty. Okay, now they're gonna spread it out now. Kicker is Alexander Davis. Davis puts his hand in the air. Now he approaches the ball. And he squibs it along the ground. Picked up at the 45-yard line. Running to the middle. Hit hard. And right there at the 45 is where the Wildcats will be downed. It was one of the up men that picked up the ball for BCU. Couldn't really catch a number. It was Nabanye Moore, the tight end. That's that's why you put those receivers and tight ends as the up man, because if yeah. they kick it short, you uh -huh. need somebody with sure hands to pick it up. He's a former quarterback, so he's he got he, great hands. He is a former quarterback, Nabanye Moore. Moore played quarterback at Statesville and South Point High Schools and a postgraduate Palmetto Prep. 
had a high school record of 25-4 and four with over 6,200 career passing yards and 52 touchdowns, and yet he's playing tight end for the Wildcats. Tyleek Bethea from the 46-yard line is in the gun. Beth he's got Jimmy Robinson to his right. He takes the snap, puts it in the belly of Robinson, and he goes absolutely nowhere, lost a yard back to the 45. Mississippi Valley has the momentum right now. That defense just stopped that play and lost a yard on it. Yep, nice tackle by Lucas Banks, the junior out of Houston, Texas. Got a guy down with cramps. That is Ejavius Jackson, the redshirt freshman from Scuba, Mississippi. Um, Scuba? Scuba, Mississippi. Kemper High School. Didn't play last year, redshirted. Is that near Tupelo? <laughs> I have no idea. <laughs> that near one below. Now, and he only has two tackles and half a tackle for loss on the season. Hasn't played a lot, Jackson. Okay. okay, we can't get back into this pattern that we've been into. We're diving a pass and, a, and, a, and then a, a tunnel screen. No. We can't do that. we got to continue to move the ball down the field. Second and 11 from the 45-yard line of BCU going right to left. 10.58 to go. Here in this third quarter, Wildcats up by 10. Hand off, Robinson cuts it back up the middle and tripped up. Got back to the original line of scrimmage at a yard more third and nine. And it looked like he cut into traffic instead of away from traffic. He keeps cut outside, he'll be, he'll be still running. Okay, this is a big down right here, guys. Third and 10, three receivers right, single left. One of those receivers is Nabanye Moore. Hard count by Bethea trying to get Mississippi Valley to draw off sides. Won't happen this time. Now he changes the play. Robinson shifts from left to right in the backfield. Ball in the middle of the field. Here comes the pressure. Bethea screen left side to Jakari Allen Johnson has space. Dragged down from behind to the 50 yard line. He had a chance, DAJ, but he was caught from the backside by Omar Emmons. And it'll be fourth down and a three and out for BCU. They were after. waiting on that play, guys. We run that all the time, man. After good field position right. off the penalty, right. Wildcats do nothing with it. Picked up only four yards on them four plays. And now the, the Wildcats just, well, again, their defense got three plays arrest, and they're going to send them back out there, and Mississippi Valley uh, going to continue to try and chip away at this lead. Anthony Frederick to punt. Kobe Chambers back to receive. He stands at the 15-yard line. Frederick does get the punt away. It's a high spiral. Backs Chambers up. It's going to go into the end zone. Let's it fly over his head and out the back of the end zone for a touchback. And the Delta Devils was set up at the 25. So you hope your defense right now comes back and plays much stronger than they did at the beginning of the quarter. Because they drove that football, what, 70 yards? Um, 69 60 yards? 60 yards. 69 plays, 60 yards in 3 minutes and 29 seconds. Now they got the momentum. Ball at the 20 for Mississippi Valley State. And the defense, I think, needs to come up with another turnover. They have um, two on the game, a fumble recovery and an uh, interception, and have had two interceptions chalked off for pass interference penalties. And Dan Ryan, the legendary Dan Ryan, leaves the press box. He's on his way home, and we wish Dan the best of health. Sisk hands the ball off up the middle. Nowhere to go for the running back for Mississippi Valley. Got one, maybe. And second down and nine after the carry by Jared Wilson. Sisk is still in the game at quarterback. Clock runs 9.13 to go here in the third quarter. And the air has completely gone out of this building even though the Wildcats oh. are up by 10. It now fe it feels like we're behind by 10 points even though we're up by it 10. Does. <laughs> Second and eight after the two-yard rush. Two receivers each side, whistle and a stoppage of play. They're going to call a timeout early. To, oh, they got delay. Now they're, gonna, they're not going to choose to take a timeout and to negate the delay of game penalty. They took one in the first half. And in the first half, I can understand because, you know, he, mm -hmm. but the way this game is going right now, it may come down to the last couple of plays. And you want those timeouts in your back pocket. So it'll be second and 13. Back at the 17-yard line. Snap to Sisk. Oh! Fumble the ball. He picks it up at the 10. Runs back to the 5. He gets spun down at the 7-yard line. Mm. Bad snap. Jeremy Greaves made the sack. And now it's going to be third and a country mile. Steven Sparrow in there on the tackle, man. Almost had that football. Oh, it was Greaves. Mm. Sparrow was also in there, but... It was just a bad snap. He fumbled it. 
All right, this is a big play. We can't let him get first Third down. Third down and 5, 10, 15, 23. Third and 23 for Mississippi Valley from the seven yard line. Got to get to the 30. Look for that little pass across the middle here. Tight end. Sisk at his own two, takes the snap. Quarterback draw left, nowhere to go. Spun down, no yardage. Greaves 54. again. The Greaves have been playing a heck of a football game tonight. Defense stood tall that time on the drive. Backed them up almost 20 yards. Going to punt it from about the six-yard line. That's the fifth tackle of the game for Jeremy Greaves. And all of them have been big, big plays. All of them have been big. And the, now, this is that's the wild. The defense needed to step up, and they did step up. And it, they jumped on a Valley miscue. And now, punting from the back of the end zone is Anthony Turnage. Dakari Allen Johnson on midfield logo. He comes all the way up to the 40. It's a bounces on the 35, rolls to the Let 40. It Let it go. And it's going to roll to the 45, 46, and stop. And they tried to push Dakari Allen Johnson into the ball after it was resting on the ground. <laughs> but he was uh, wise enough to that that he does not let that affect him. So the Wildcats will take over. At their own, at the Mississippi Valley 45, you got good field position. Now you got to do something with it. We'll find out what they can do when we come back. 7.07 to go here in this third quarter. BCU 17, Mississippi Valley 7. This is BCU Athletics on the Cat Eye Network and 1380 WELE. Here we go, Bethune-Cookman on the ball at the 46-yard line of Mississippi Valley after a short punt from the back of the end zone by Anthony Turnage. Talik Bethea is the quarterback. Jimmy Robinson, the running back. Ball on the right hash, two receivers to the short side right, one receiver, that's Tink Boyd to the near side left, matched up one-on-one -on -one at the numbers. Nabonye Moore is the tight end out to the left. The red hat's still on the field. And, uh, <laughs> and we wait. The, both teams are there, they're lined up, they're ready to go, and we're just waiting on TV. So while we wait, I'll tell you about basketball season. It's right around the corner, and the Cat Eye Network has all the coverage you need. And Reggie Theus and Janelle Creighton squads hit the court this Monday, November 6th. Catch the Cat Eye Network's call live from UCF's Addison Financial Arena as ba women's basketball opens up the season. Handoff, middle, big space. Jimmy Robinson cuts it left. Excuse no. me, that's Markai Shaw, and he gets five yards up to the 41. Shaw runs the football hard, and he's quick, too. He's only a freshman and hasn't seen a lot of uses. This was his first game of the year where he's gotten carries. And, of course, he had that touchdown pass on the trick play. Ball on the 41 after a gain of five. Three right, single left. Shaw goes out in motion to the left. It's going to screen the ball, read it his way. Cuts back to the 40 in traffic. Falls forward to the 38-yard line. It'll be third down and two. They're mixing it up a little bit different now. They're, they're, they're gaining yards. We didn't go to the run, dive up the middle or the auto-tonal screen on this one. Yep. 
And I like Markai Shaw in the game. I think he's just a freshman, yeah. and, and he gives us a chance to do something. The breath of fresh air. I think it's four down territory. Third and two from the 38. Bethea comes up under center, and it's an offsides call. Yeah. Well, the, well, it wasn't a free play. There was a lot of movement on the line of scrimmage. It was on them. It was on them. We'll see what the referees say. I apologize for being a little bit quick. I thought it might have been a free play, but then nobody moved after the, the encroachment. But Bethea was in the gun, came up under center, and everybody on the Valley team crowded the line of scrimmage, and there was movement. And they got, they yeah. did get Valley for the contact. Yeah, that could cost them. They, they and that's they, a first down yeah. for BCU. They had a stop, man, and he jumped off sides, trying to stop the uh, quarterback sneak, and we pick up the first down. Hopefully Bethea could convert this. Here we go, first and 10 for Bethune-Cookman from the 33. Puts it in the running, the Shaw's hands. Reverse to Boyd, Boyd at the 40, cuts it back, driven out of bounds. It's gonna be a loss of five all the way back at the 38. Another trick play, a reverse pass I they were thought, trying to throw. I thought Boyd was gonna throw it, mm -hmm. but uh, there was nobody open downfield and he lost five yards. At least they're opening up the playbook a little bit tonight. We're seeing some things we haven't seen all season. Yeah, but now it's go time. Second, they only gave him a three yard loss, second and 13 at the 46-yard line. Comes pressure. Johnson in motion left to right, hand off to Shaw up the middle, splits two defenders, falls forward to the original line of scrimmage for a three-yard gain at the 38, third down and 10. This is not field goal range, but mm -mm. you want to try and get six, seven here and then go for it on fourth down if you can. But I think even if you don't get any yards, it's four down territory. But the Wildcats cannot afford to have another empty possession here, especially with the way Mississippi Valley State has proven that they can move the ball. Jalen Terrazzo into the game. Watch him down low. Three receivers left to the wide side. One right. Bethea takes the snap. Here comes the blitz. He steps up into the rush. Throws down the middle. Way overthrows Amari Stewart. He had Stewart wide open, but he threw it about 10 yards too far in front of him. It's fourth down and 10, and the offense is going to stay on the field because they are in no man's land, not in field goal range, and they don't want to punt it. They will punt it, though. Oh, my goodness. Oh, no, they're going to kick a field, field goal. goal. Here comes Kate Hector. He's mm. long on the, he got the season. Wind behind he's 45. Him. The wind is behind him, but he's, he's four of eight, 50% on field goals this year. This will be a 50-yard attempt. Ball in the middle of the field. He's had a couple blocked as well. And we call timeout. BCU get a call timeout. Play clock was running down. And that's that's tough because you lose yeah. that timeout that could be important at the end of the game. I wonder if we'll punt it now, trying to pin them uh, back. Let's see. Where's Frederick? I don't see him. He's in the huddle down there, but I don't see him getting ready to come on. Anyway. Basketball season is right around the corner. The Cat Eye Network has all the coverage you need as Reggie Theus and Janelle Creighton squads hit the court this Monday, November 6th. Catch the Cat Eye Network live from UCF's Addison Financial Arena as BCU Women's Basketball opens up the 2023-24 season against the Knights. Don't miss a second of the action at youtube.com slash Cat Eye Network. Here is Anthony Frederick yeah, looking to punt yeah. and try to pin the Delta Devils deep. Frederick is standing at the Valley 47. There is nobody back deep. Valley was not ready. They, had to, got a guy they had to run a returner on real quick. That's Kobe Bates. He stands at the 10. Frederick takes the low snap. It's a high backwards spinning kick. Fair catch called for and into the end zone. It, was, it bounced right at the three yard line and nobody in maroon and gold touched the ball. So it'll be Mississippi Valley ball at the 20-yard line. That one looked a bit weird, didn't it? Yeah, it did. I done went for the field goal. I want, I want to see. He had to win. Look at, look, look at the flags on top of the goal yeah, post. Wind at his wind back. Wind at his back. He kicked that thing straight through. I guess you don't want to risk it being blocked and giving. And giving them momentum. And that good was a gutsy position. call. That was a gutsy call either way. Anyway, it'll be Mississippi Valley ball when we come back. 4.50 to go third quarter. Wildcats with a 17-7 lead here. At Daytona Stadium, this is BCU Athletics on the Cat Eye Network and 1380 WELE.
Come be a part of BCU Athletics and support the Cat Eye Network. If you or your business is interested in partnering with us here at the Cat Eye Network, you can reach out to the Wildcats Athletic Communications Department at BCU Sports Info at Cookman.edu. That's BCU Sports Info at Cookman.edu. Wildcats defense on the field with a 10 point lead, 17 7, 450 to go here in this third quarter. Mississippi Valley on the ball after a touchback and the Wildcat drive that. They started at the four, at the Valley 46 and didn't really get anywhere. Got one first down, but couldn't sustain it. The reverse killed us. Yeah, lost far, five yards, couldn't sustain it after that. Sisk is the quarterback. Three receivers right, none to the left. Delayed handoff up the middle. Nowhere to go for the running back. That's Jacoby Thomas wrestled down for no gain. We've kind of figured out this delayed handoff there. Jabari Jowden, the strong safety in there, make yeah. the tackle. Yeah, he, he was coming on a, on a backside blitz, and he, and he blitzed right into the uh, running back and stopped him for no and game. There were two black and gold jerseys back there almost before Thomas took the handoff. Same formation for Valley. Three receivers to the right. Four down lineman for BCU. Sisk takes the snap, throws the screen, uh, running back screen to the far oh. side and slips out of a tackle. 30, 35, 40, convoy 45 midfield. He's down at the BCU 48, 47 yard lines where they'll spot it. Just a simple right receiver yeah. screen, one missed tackle and he's gone. No, the running back on the wheel route, wide open out of the backfield. He gave up too many yards on that play. And it was... I believe Iverson Clement, here's a run up the middle on first and 10, past the 50 Did it go again? to the 48. And this is where Valley's dangerous. They get that ball rolling and the Wildcat defense just kind of laid down on yeah. that first drive. Yeah. They were better on the second drive and now Valley seems to have their mojo again and uh, Shelton Quarles is down with an injury. Yeah, Shelton's down right now. Let's kind of stop the momentum for Mississippi Valley. Yeah, Malik Stinnett is gonna come in, the freshman out of Las Vegas, Desert Pines High School, six tackles on the year for Stinnett. <coughs> Quarles, big part of this defense. He'll get up and walk off under his own power though. Yeah. 3.38 to go here in the third quarter. Valley out of mm. the huddle. This is a big drive right here for Mississippi Valley. They wanna get back in the game. Jaden Sisk before this only threw three passes for 10 yards. And he has come in and played a fantastic game of football. Second down and five from the BCU 48. And the ball gets away on the snap, Sis dives on it, still loose, and it is finally downed all the way back at the Valley 40. Loss of seven on the play, another bad snap that Sis just had to eat. And Sis was on his knees when he reached for that football. He couldn't move. The ball happened to fall right by his side, and he just covered it. So now third down. third down, 5, 10, 15, 17. Come third on, 17 from the uh, Valley 40 going left to right after another bad snap forces Sisk to lose a bunch of yards. This happened on their last drive, Watch too. Watch the back out of the backfield coming this way. Two receivers to each side. Four down lineman for BCU. Here's the snap. Sisk looks to throw down the middle of the field. Pick it intercepted. Up. Intercepted to the 45-yard line. Darnell Dees, 45-30, 25-20 on the right side. Maz, one man to beat. He's going to be stopped at the 10-yard line. Looking for a flag. No flags. Darnell Dees, he was complaining during the interview this week for the pregame show that he wasn't getting any returns of the kicking game. Well, there's a big return for you. First and goal, BCU at the 10. Big play by the defense. We needed the defense to stand tall. They were, they were being driven down the field, but that pass, he stepped in front of the receiver and returned it all the way to the 11-yard line. Wow, Darnell Dees, great job. I'm gonna watch to see the replays and describe it for you a little bit better in detail. But uh, Darnell Dees, who just, who, who is only in the defensive lineup because of a uh, injury to Quan Harris. Yeah. Yeah, it was just a deep shot, and he was playing safety over the top. He stepped in front of the underthrown ball and picked it off. Let's do something with these ten, these eight downs we get. First and ten from the 11-yard line. Can get a first down inside the one. Two by two, the receivers. Hand off Jimmy Robinson. A hole opens up for him a little bit up the middle. Gets two to the nine. Just keep pounding it away. You get eight There's tries. There's a Valley here. player slow to get up. A helmet, I think, came off. Mm. We can get a first down at the two-yard line. And there is yeah, there is a Valley player down in the middle of the field. 
It'll be second down and eight for Bethune-Cookman from their own nine. And in, in, in this kind of situation, really, right, it's, in, it's a goal-to-go situation. Goal-to-go. If you get a first and goal inside the one, yeah, cool. But yeah. you're really trying to try and put it in the end zone here. You want to put it in the end zone? Field goal to give you 20-17 to 17 lead and still make it a two-score game. And the uh, young man from Mississippi Valley is now up. He's walking off under his own power. I believe that's Lucas Banks, the defensive tackle who was down and being helped to the sideline. Here we go. Second and eight from the nine. Can get a first down inside the one. After the Darnell D's interception, this is the best chance the Wildcats have to put it in the end zone tonight. Bethea takes the snap, handoff, Robinson cuts left, looking for a lane, still going all the way to the sideline, near side, ripped out of bounds at the five yard line. Four yard rush, and it'll be third down and three from the, or third and four from the five. Hmm. Tough three yards right here to yeah. get. Yeah. Ball at the four officially, so third and three. Two by two, the receivers, Moore goes left to right. Hand off, Robinson up the middle, buried. Nowhere. At the five, he might have lost a yard. He gets back to the four, now fourth down, and I think they're gonna, how you have to send the field goal unit on. You Kick can't, the field goal. you yeah. can't be this aggressive. And I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna rant a little bit. That, that was predictable. That was way too predictable. You lined up two by two, one man across the formation. They've seen it a hundred times on film. Run the ball up the middle. You are three yards away from putting this game out of reach. Move outside the tackles, for the love of God. All right, rant over. There you go. <laughs> Good job. <laughs> Good job. There's going to be a 21-yard field goal for Cade Hector. I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to catch some stick for that at practice this week when that's I go okay. to do my interviews, but that's okay. Hector takes the snap to Tilio holds it. It is good. good from 21 yards. And with 43 seconds left to go in the third quarter, it's Bethune-Cookman 20, Mississippi Valley State 7. I'll tell you what, the defense has shown up today, and it has led to the offense scoring points. At least the offense did put some points on the board. We've seen it early in the year. We had these opportunities, and we come up with zero. We got the three points out of it, out of it. It's still a two score game yeah. come on defense and, it, it, and it, listen I'm, I'm frustrated because I want to see us do better right. I'm not angry yeah. I, I, yeah. I, I, and I know we could have done better yeah. on that drive. we've seen the generic calls all year long and we've, we've been falling back and forth into that this afternoon you know you run two by two and you run a man in motion everybody knows where that is that's yep. Jimmy Robinson up the middle yep so and, hopefully and they just crowd the box yeah. and, and Robinson yeah. has nowhere to go yeah. especially as an undersized back right Robinson just 5'7 195 he why not, is best. why not run a swing pass back out of the backfield like they did we we he is best and all of our backs that are undersized are best in space trying to make a man miss 1v1 with a cut not running behind the offensive line. Anyway, it's 20 to seven to Thune Cookman, 43 to seconds to go in the third quarter. The Delta Devils will get the ball back. We gotta cover this kick. Kobe Bates is back to return along with Carrick Ross. Ross is on the near side, Bates on the far side. Here's the kick, it's gonna go near side to Ross. Picked up at the eight yard line, reverse. No, they fake the reverse again. This time the Wildcats do read it and Ross only gets to the 20 yard line. I think that's their, that's their play on yeah. kick returns. They do it every time yeah. and they either pitch it or not. You got up to the 25 yard line. That's about where you're having if you kick it out of bounds. Yep. Well, if you kick it out of bounds, it's the 35. Okay. But 25 is, is a, is a kick as a touchback and uh, interesting because it, you can fair catch <coughs> kickoffs inside the 10 and they'll go to the 25 yard line just like a touchback would so I, I, I wonder why both teams really are being so aggressive at trying to return let's see what the defense does right here you know we got some great play out of our secondary last time out let's see what happens now first and 10 <coughs> for Mississippi Valley got two from guys their own, on the near side nobody only one man here from their own 26 yeah there is an overload to the right for Valley, Sisk the quarterback, <coughs> Wilson the running back. <coughs> Wildcats bring backside pressure, hand off Wilson. Nowhere. Absolutely nowhere to go. Gain of one, second and nine. You're right, th th that miss, the Wildcats didn't correct that mismatch on the near side. <coughs> but they did bring pressure off the backside, Jalen Christian. 
crowd's thinned out a little bit here in the second half. Still a big showing from the students all the way out to our left-hand side. They can't help. They got to ride the bus back, so they can't lead to the bus lead. <laughs> Second down and nine from the 27 for Mississippi Valley. Come on, D. Four down linemen for BCU. One receiver plus the tight end right. Two receivers left, and we Water. won't get the playoff. That's the end of the third quarter. Fours up, we head to the final frame. It is the Wildcats of Bethune-Cookman 20, the Delta Devils of Mississippi Valley State 7. We'll get the final quarter of action when we come back to Daytona Stadium. This is Bethune-Cookman football on the Cata Network and 1380 WELE. We are back at Daytona Stadium for the start of the fourth quarter. Michael Torello, Daryl Latiel, high atop Larry Kelly Field here as the Bethune-Cookman Wildcats looking for their first conference win of the year. They lead the Mississippi Valley State Delta Devils 20-7. to And looking at the um, total score by quarter for the season, Daryl, Mississippi Valley State has scored 34 points in the fourth in all fourth quarters combined. That is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight fourth quarters. They scored 34 combined points. So not a they don't close really strong. Well, we just got to play defense right yeah. here. The de I mean the defense just showed out tonight. It's a two score game. There so. was only one drive that right out of the gate in the second half. Mm -hmm. The Wildcats came out we flat. They drove down yeah. and scored. Other than that, it's been very good from BCU's defense. They've got four takeaways, but only two have counted, unfortunately. But uh, the the two big interceptions have set the Wildcats up for points inside uh, Valley territory. And I mean, happy for for Darnell Dees, of course, to get oh, his yeah. first pick of the year. Omari Hill Robinson continues to dominate. He now has three interceptions on the year and a fumble recovery for a touchdown. Um, the defensive line, Adrian Hall, Conroy Cunningham, uh, Eddie Walls continue to do their thing. And it, it's not been a great day for like sacks and tackles for loss, but they are putting the quarterback under pressure every time he drops back. Yeah, Conroy Cunningham is playing on a bad knee, but he's really been playing well with that brace this afternoon. And the, and the defensive line, man, they've been putting pressure on that quarterback most of the football game. It will be second down and nine for Mississippi Valley State from their own 27-yard line going right to left in this fourth, qu fourth quarter. Green helmets, gray jerseys, white numbers, green stripe. Wildcats, gold helmets, black jerseys, black pants, gold, num uh, gold numbers, gold trim. We are just waiting for the red hat to leave the field, and then we can commence fourth quarter festivities. Now, now we're playing that twin... Right, we got a safety came over on top. Yeah, two now receivers mm -hmm. left for yeah, Valley, stacked. one to the right. The Wildcats have overloaded the tight ends to the left, or excuse me, linebackers to the left. Wouldn't be surprised if we see a corner blitz from the weak side. One man in motion, that puts three receivers to the right. Wide open. Sisk, under pressure, escapes out the back door, gets to the 30 before he's brought down. They were looking for that tight end mm -hmm. wheel, right? Mm -hmm. The man in motion was the tight end yeah. left to right, but he was covered. 
Yeah, that safety stepped up and, and, and took him out of the backfield that negated that pass. Yeah. Last time they ran that, they got great yards. Yeah, Sisk had to just take off and run, only got two Big yards. Play. Third down and six <clears throat> from the 30. Need the 36 for a first down. Sisk looks to the sideline to get the play, and now he goes down injured. Sisk just fell down as he was looking to the sideline to get the play. Looks like it's a cramp. Yeah, and he might have to come out, too. Well, if the trainers are coming out, so look, he will have to come out. Uh, Tigerian Williams is the other quarterback that has played tonight. Um, quickly run some quarterback numbers. Williams, three of six, 50%, 25 yards, one interception, three sacks. Uh, that's Williams. Um, Sisk, five of 10, 50%, 108 yards, no sacks. So Sisk has definitely played better than Williams did. I'm looking at uh, our passing, you know, Bethea is 12 out of 18 tonight for 136 yards in three quarters. He's, he's, this is easily his best game. Yeah, and he's 56% completion on the season for 195 yards and one touchdown, but he's that's before tonight's contest. It will be third down and six from the 30 for Valley. Who is in their quarterback? It is Tigerian Williams after the injury to Jaden Sisk. We don't know what the freshman's condition is, but it will be Williams. Two receivers right, two receivers left, all tight to the formation. Snap, pressure, throwing, far side, back shoulder catch at the 45-yard line, first down for Mississippi Valley. Nice grab there by Malik Antoine, his first catch of the game. Yeah, that ball was thrown short, and he happened to come back and get it for the first down. Tigerian Williams has a good arm on him if he can stand in the pocket. Three receivers all to the left. Nobody on the short side right. Williams takes the snap, low snap. He corrals it, throws the wheel route far sideline to the running back, and he overthrows, it, overthrows him, excuse me, second down and 10. That guy was wide open. Yeah, he was. Well, there was a safety cover uh, shading over, so I don't think he would have gotten <coughs> far. But still, that wheel out of the backfield, the, the running back just kind of goes to the weak side, and the Wildcats have not covered that very well tonight. Second and 10 for Mississippi Valley from the 43-yard line going right to left in the fourth quarter. Another big play by the defense right here. Four receivers in the formation. Delayed handoff, running left. Got a lane, 45, and stopped up right there. Steven Sparrow does the Dikembe Mutombo finger <laughs> wag at Fabian Fant as he says, absolutely not. Yeah. Only a gain of one, third and nine from the 48. The Sparrow's a hard, hard player. 44, excuse me. Third and nine from the Valley 44. Big, Big play. play for def Big the defense play, here. Trying to get off the field. Williams back to pass. Pressure from the backside. Steps up in the pocket. He's going to throw it over the middle. Diving catch near a first Jeez. down. They got him. They got the tight end, Jackson Davis. And it's another play where the rush almost gets back there. And Williams now slow to get up. So they got two quarterbacks walking wounded here, Mississippi Valley. It was a step away from a sack. First and 10 for Valley into the Bethune-Cookman territory at the 46. It's gonna be a bomb burner at the end. Yeah, and, and you can tell that uh, <coughs> Tigerian Williams is hurt. And I think Valley just took a timeout. Oh, now they're gonna review it for targeting. So in the first half, Eddie Walls got reviewed for targeting and it wasn't a targeting, but it was a roughing the passer. I, well, I can't see what that play, what targeting they would call on that play. We'll look at the, at the replay. It was just a pass over the middle. Oh, he got hit late. That's Dearest Thomas, he's gone. Wow, I didn't see that as the ball was already out. <laughs> but the Wildcats look like they're gonna lose Dearest the Thomas. So, Williams rolled to his right, threw off his back foot, and way after the yeah. pass was away, Dearest the Thomas came and laid him out. I didn't see it because the ball was already gone. My focus was down the field, but yeah, on replay, that's a tough one. I, I don't think the Wildcats, off the top of my head, have had a player ejected for targeting yet this year. He, only, he hit him with the shoulder, though. Yeah. I, I, Did he catch that, though? 
I don't. That's not what they're reviewing. I don't know. Yeah, you let that ball hit the ground. Well, that's again. That's not what they're reviewing. They're reviewing yeah. targeting against Dearis Thomas and the Wildcats' best defender, fifth in the swack in tackles, maybe about to be gone from the game. We shall see. Advertised with Wildcat Nation, BCU Athletics is offering sponsorship opportunities across the Cat Eye Network. For more information, you can reach out to Bethune Cookman Athletic Communications at BCU Sports Info at cookman.edu that's bcu sports info and cookman.edu a couple of football games left to get your business on the air but of course basketball season all winter long baseball and softball coming up in the spring plenty of time to advertise with the cat eye network what we don't want right here is a dog fight in the last last part of this game yeah because it's, it's, it's all it's making up to be a last person with the ball because if they go down and score here they're down by six and be Think about it this way. The Wildcats have kicked, uh, attempted three field goals in the red zone. They made two of them. If you get even two of those into the end zone, this game's way out of reach because the Wildcats have 35 points. But uh, that's water under bridge. You no. Can't talk about that now. And, of course, with this review where the Wildcats may be about to lose their top defender in Dearest Thomas, his backup is the junior out of Tallahassee, Florida, Devin Harrell. But did they throw a flag on the play? They didn't. But you don't have to. They don't but have to be a flag right. for targeting. Okay, but they'll still be penalized. Yeah, that will be penalized an extra 15 yards, which will move um, Mississippi Valley inside the 30 of Bethune Cookman. They're talking to the Mississippi Valley State coach right now. The uh, officials are. The white hat still has the headphones on, talking to the replay officials up here in the booth. And we just have no idea what's going to happen. We're just kind of left in the dark. 12.42 to go in this Thursday night contest. Bethune-Cookman leads 20-7. to seven, But if Mississippi Valley does get a touchdown here, it it's could be gonna, very it's gonna interesting. Get, it's going to get crazy, Harry. And the last two games between these two teams have both been wild and crazy affairs. Um, He's out. Targeting. Yep, he's out. Dearis Thomas is gone for the game with targeting. And it's a... Mm, down to the 30-yard line. Yeah, all the way down to the 30-yard line. So the Wildcats' best defensive player is out. Valley gets 15 extra yards after a first down catch. Any, what would have been a first down catch anyway, moving them all the way to the Wildcat 31. And that could be the big momentum change. So who's that quarterback now? Well, yeah, because we got two walking wounded for Valley at quarterback. So it is now. Tigerian Williams. He's back. The 6'3", 240 quarterback, the freshman from Aliceville, Alabama. First and 10 for Valley from the BCU, 31. Three receivers left plus the tight end, nobody out to the right. Low snap, corralled by Williams, under pressure, has to escape to his left, throws deep down the field towards the goal line, That's incomplete. pass interference, yeah. Well, no flags were thrown. It was a wrestling match between Omari Hill Robinson and the Valley receiver. So it's incomplete, second and 10. <laughs> yeah. They're going for the gusto that, here. That, that little five seconds between Omari Hill Robinson and the receiver for Valley could have been in the UFC. They were really going out of the goal line. Second and 10 from the 31 for the Delta Devils. Rush the back out of the backfield. DeFabian Fant, nope, fake the hand off, throws screen left side, 30-25, out of bounds right there to Kobe Bates, the junior out of Jacksonville, Florida, the Oak Leaf High School product. A couple of Mississippi Valley fans have made the trip. I'm sure some friends and family of the Florida yeah, players. Yeah, there's probably some Orlando people in Jacksonville people yep. there. Third down and four. Ball spotted at the 24 yard line for Mississippi Valley. Williams takes the snap, quarterback draw, nowhere to go. He falls forward, he's close to a first down. Did he push the pile far enough? No. no. He only got one. Up to the 33, fourth and two. Mm. What do you do here, guys? I think Valley might, they gotta go, go, they I gotta think Valley go, might go for this. They got to go for it. Fourth and two at the 23. Got to get to the 21 for a first down. Big play here for the defense. Here we go. 
Tigerian Williams will go under center. There is three receivers, two left, single right, Fant in the backfield. Wildcats have only six in the box. They move one wide receiver, Bates from the left to the right, now two receivers to the wide side. They're gonna call, they're gonna let the clock run out. Trying to get the Wildcats to jump off no, side. The clock ran out. The clock ran out, timeout Valley. 11 minutes left to go, so both teams have used one timeout here in the second half, two apiece left. Huge play coming up after this timeout. Fourth down and two for Mississippi Valley from the BCU 23. Wildcats are up 20 to seven. This thing is building to be a great finish. These two teams have been battling all day. Both teams have give, left some points on the field. And now those points are really looming here with a two, with a, what, two score game? Yep. And it could be a three score game or four or five if BCU puts one more in the end zone. But again, you can't talk about that. You can only talk about the current situation. What do you draw up here if you're Valley? Uh, I think you got to go wide. You got to go wide and try to get a wide. pass? Yeah. Or a, or a draw? Mm-hmm. Let's see what they do. Williams, before the timeout, was set up under center. He will go back into the shotgun now. they came now. out of the huddle with 12 men. That's a, that's a penalty. One man did run off late. Three or two tight ends set to the right. One yeah. receiver left. Quarterback draw. Williams falls forward first down to the 19. Yeah, they just, put a, they just put a tackle in the backfield and just ran it. They just, the quarterback keeper, but they put basically everybody with size, all the size they had on the line. Just ran it right up the middle. First and 10 for Valley from the BCU 19. The field's getting shorter here mm. for the Wildcats. This thing's getting tighter too. You need a big play turnover here. First and 10, 19 yard line. Williams in the gun. Hand off Wilson, running left side. Bounces off a tackler inside the 15 down to the 13. That's a seven yard run. Yeah, he, he ran to the back side that time, the weak side. He bounced off Amari Hill Robinson, who couldn't make the tackle. Jowden did make it. Well, um, Valley going fast. Second and three. Another handoff. Wilson running right. Breaks the first tackle and the second. Still going inside the five. It's going to be first and goal for Mississippi Valley at the three-yard line. The, the this, Delta, is gonna, this is the, the basically the same thing as the first drive of the second half. They're just crazy drive. Hat man. on a hat, and the Wildcats. That's three missed tackles for BCU in the hole. First and goal from the three. Hand off Wilson. Up the middle, didn't get anywhere. Shelton Quarles made the tackle. Watch the quarterback. He, he could have kept that and just scampered in. Keep an eye on that quarterback. Wildcats trying to hold inside the five. We've got uh, Adrian Hall and Jeremy Greaves yeah. coming on in place of Conroy Cunningham and Laquan Johnson. Yeah, they who's got a lot of beef in there. Hurting. Laquan Johnson is, or well, excuse me, Elliot Ezer DeBull is coming out. We got some walking wounded on the defensive line now, too. Laquan Johnson got a report at halftime that he is injured. Second and goal from the three. Snap, Williams. Back got to pass, him. sacked! Back at the 12-yard line. They tried to sit, run a pass play, and Eddie Walls got back there and crushed him. Now it's third and goal. They spot the ball back at the 13. Eddie Walls slipped through there, man, and really made a great play in the, in the backfield. They tried to roll to the right, and Walls came in from the backside. Loss of nine officially back to the 13-yard line, third and goal. Three receivers all to the left. Williams takes the snap. Wheel route, right-hand side caught. At the five, two Wildcats are there down at the five-yard line about Jacoby Thomas, the Orlando kid. I think they, they got to go for this, right? Fourth and goal go at the it. five. This would be a huge play if they stop them right here. Guys. Here we go. Fourth and goal at the five. Valley two of two on fourth down tonight. 0 of 8 on third down, if you can believe it. Fourth and goal from the five. Wildcats trying to hold on. Williams claps his hands, takes the snap, looks to throw, throws back corner of the end zone. It is knocked away, incomplete, no flags. Incomplete. 
Well, our defense did it again, guys. Okay. They held. You talk about Jeremy Greaves having a good day. He knocked that ball away. <laughs> Defensive lineman <laughs> out in, in pass coverage. In the secondary. In the secondary. <laughs> Greaves is going to be BCU player of the game. Oh, uh, I mean, if he's not, he, he's got to be Wildcat of the week coming out. He, he has had an incredible game. You got to get some yards here, though. Yeah. Got to get a couple of well, first Wildcats downs. Well, Wildcats are going to be backed up to their own five, and they have struggled to move the ball in this second half. Wildcats 12 first downs. Mississippi Valley State 21 first downs on the night. That's what you call dodging the ammunition. We have dodged so many bullets tonight. The three, the block punt, the uh, the block kick, the two missed kicks, the the stop on fourth down inside the five. Just. You know, I was at uh, Grambling. I was on the sideline last week, and I heard Coach D.J. McCarthy say something. He said, sometimes the football gods will make it right. Season we've had this year, the football gods are out there tonight making sure well, <laughs> we're, we're doing something right the, tonight. The, the gods may have set it up, but we still got to knock it down. Got to knock it down. 7.41 to go. Wildcats up 20-7, to seven, backed up on their own five. If they go three and out here, Valley still Man. has all the momentum. You're right. We need to use some of this clock. But the rushing game hasn't been there. No, it hasn't. 21 carries, 73 yards, 3.5 yards per carry for well, the Wildcats What we've today. done successfully is throw the football, but we don't want to throw it down here. So we're going to have to find something. Something to work in the rushing game. Remember, There's not remember, a lot of rushing in this whole game. But that Texas Southern game, we had that sweep, that, that mm -hmm. sweep going. We haven't run that sweep tonight. Well, we have. Tink Boyd lost five yards, and they never ran no, it that, again. That was a reverse, but we ran the sweep with the running mm -hmm. back. All right. Wildcats, 21 carries, 73 yards, 3.5 yards a carry. Mississippi Valley, 45 carries, 98 yards, 2.2 yards a carry. Seven Both minutes. teams have completed 30, uh, 13 passes, excuse me. Mississippi Valley, two, uh, 230 yards. Wildcats, 177. So the Wildcats, under their season average offensively, but has still put up 20 points in Which both rushing and passing. What you want to do here, you want to get a good drive, at least flip the field and use some of this clock. Yeah, 741. So we got the ball at the what, five-yard line? Five-yard line. Red Hat's still on the field, so it's the teams are taking the field, but we won't, uh, we won't start for a bit. Okay, you got Jimmy Robinson in the backfield. Mississippi Valley has run 69 plays for 328 yards. Wildcats just 40 plays for 250 yards. First and 10 for the Wildcats from their own five-yard line going left to right, 741 to go here in this fourth quarter. Wildcats with a 20-7 to lead, trying to get their first conference win of the season and first conference win under head coach Raymond Woody. And you know he doesn't show any emotion on yeah. the sideline, but he, you know he wants this one. Yeah, he wants it. Here we go. Bethea in at quarterback, stands on his own goal line. Tight end moves left to right. Up the middle, Robinson on a play action. They run the ball. Robinson pushes the pile. That's going to be seven he yards. He's got seven yards on the play. The yep. clock's running. One of the better runs of the game right up the middle. As much as, as much maligned as that middle run is from my point of view, they got, eight, they got seven yards out of it. But that's predictable. We just happened to block it. Yep, and now we're going to let another 25 seconds bleed off the clock before they snap the ball again, or at least they should. 7-10 and counting to go fourth quarter. Second and three. Bethea still on the gun with Robinson. Six in the box for Mississippi Valley. It's another handoff up the middle. Robinson has a lane, 15, down. cut down at the 16-yard line. That's good enough for a first down. He hit that thing quick that time, like he wanted that first down. They've got 42 in there as a, as a tight end. I don't have a 42 on my roster. Not sure who that is. I think it might be Ian Lange. But anyway, first down and 10 for VCU from their own 16-yard line. We don't have a 42. Yep. Two receivers to the short side left. That's the far side of the field ball left hash. Six in the box for Valley. Now seven, Terzato in motion left to right, hand off Robinson. Again, he had a big lane to the left, but he just pushed, put his head down, ran right up the middle and got one yard. I'm going to say it one more time this season. He <laughs> bounced that thing, Jimmy Robinson. You're still running. 
Gain of two officially, second and eight at the 18. Five minutes and 51 one seconds to go. Well, let's see, even if you get two more plays here, that takes another minute off the clock. But hopefully you get another first down. You don't want to have to throw the football and kill yeah. it. Kill Va the clock. Valley's starting to stack the box now. They know the game mm -hmm. plan is just run. Nabanye Moore back in at tight end. Davino Ellington, lone receiver onto the left side, two right. Handoff Robinson, up the middle, yeah, they're crushed. Just they're just blitzing it. We lost. Well, yeah, he, he just got crushed by Derek Jones, the sophomore out of Huntsville, Alabama. No gain, why third and nine. A, why not just run a, a swing, third and eight. swing pass like a long handoff? A third and eight now. And do, do you just hand this ball off again and punt it away? It looks like that's what they're going to do. Five minutes and counting left. 20 on the play clock. Robinson still in there at running back. Robinson moves left to right in the backfield. Bethea no back to pass. Here comes the blitz. Pressure in his face. Bethea gets the ball away. It is intercepted. Fla flag flag on the play. It was intended for Tink Boyd. It's returned back to the 35-30 middle of the field. But now all the way to the left side. Numbers 25-10. Pushed out of bounds at the six-yard line. There is a flag on the play. They're going to call it pass was interference. one-on-one -on -one coverage with Tink Boyd down the field. Trying to make, trying to find who picked it off. The man who picked it off is still down on the BCU sideline near side. Is there another flag in the backfield too? Yeah, there is. Both on the defense. Pass interference and um, roughing the passer. So 46 pass interference. Oh, another targeting call. So Anthony... Turn not. That can't be right. He's the kicker. No, it's number number 26 is was round. Oh, 26. Correction. So Flakewood Tucker picked it off. So yeah, Tucker picked it off, but impeded Tink Boyd while doing so. It was a deep pass, and yeah, you can see Boyd immediately threw his hands up because he had position, and Tucker just bumped him out of the way. Oh, watch the blow Tucker takes on the sideline. That's oh, why yeah. he was down. Oh, is that the targeting oh, yeah. penalty? Yeah. Well, no, 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 both no, are on the defense. No, the targeting was on the quarterback. And, I mean, not a bad return uh, by Flakewood Tucker. He got all the way to the seven-yard line. Hit. Watch this hit on the sideline. Boom. That's why he was down. He yeah. Got, he got leveled by offensive lineman. Traveris Hammond, the junior, 6'3", 277. Oh, yeah. He transferred from he Missouri. He power drove the quarterback into the ground. Transferred from yeah, Missouri two, Valley College. Two flags. Yeah. So he had the, the main official, and the white hand, and the back judge. Both mm -hmm. flew that flag. So flags all over the shop. And once again, I didn't see the, the, the replay for targeting when they just showed it. I'm going to show it again here. I don't think it was targeting. I think he just drove the quarterback into the ground. They're going to just call that a personal foul. Oh, that's targeting. He lowers his head. He, his head goes right into okay. the chest of the quarterback. That's got to be Let's targeting. See. He lowers his head. He spears the quarterback. So we may – Dearest Thomas has already gone for the Wildcats with a targeting penalty. We may be about to lose a – Mississippi Valley State defender, if you're, let, let's recap. So it was third down and eight for the Wildcats, but Thea threw a long pass over the middle trying to beat the blitz, the, the safety blitz that came. The pass was underthrown. Tink Boyd got underneath it, ready to make the catch. He got moved out of the way by Flakewood Tucker, who picked it off. That's the first penalty. Then, after Bethea let the ball go, I still didn't catch a number of the player that uh, got the late it. hit. Uh, Roughing the pass so, so do you get the pass interference yardage plus plus tack on the personal foul? I'm not sure. I think target. Where, where's our friendly swack official? We he, need to meet. He walked away. <laughs> I, I I think I think you might get both because targeting stacks. Mm -hmm. Don't quote yeah. me on that, but I think that's how that works. This has been a weird game. He, he's next door in the replay booth. That's yeah. where he went. This has been a strange game. It's been an absolutely weird football game, but. Four minutes and 32 seconds. Still plenty of football yeah. left. Here we go. Now the band wants to The band's play. playing. Pass interference. On the defense. First down. First down, Bethune Cookman. So the targeting is not going to stay. Not targeting. Okay. 
No personal foul? No personal foul. So just pass interference. And uh, so the Wildcats will move the ball on the penalty. And now you can burn more clock. And I think that, uh, that uh, pass interference may have just cost Mississippi Valley the game. Uh, it's not over yet. 4.32 to go. Valley, or both teams rather, still have two timeouts. The penalty moves the ball all the way up to the Bethune-Cookman 33-yard line. It'll be first and 10. Jimmy Robinson still the running back to Bethea's right. Nabanye more tight end to the left. Continue to run the ball. Man in motion, that's Dakari Allen Johnson. Hand off, lost the yard to Robinson, and it's second and 11. But again, that's 40 more seconds off the clock. Loss of one back to the 32. And it, so if the Wildcats do hold here. Um, you gotta flip the field with Frederick punting that football well, down the field. Again, it's, it's second and 11. The, if the Wildcats do hold on to win this game, huge momentum for Coach Woody going into the last two games of the season. Two very tough games against Alabama A&M and Florida A&M. Two of the bigger teams, too. Those, those teams are huge. Alabama A&M has to be the biggest team outside, well, outside of Southern. They got some huge guys. Second and 11 now. Play clock down under 10. Here's the snap handoff. Bethea's going to keep it. Left side, 35-40. 45 midfield. Bethea in a foot race. Dragged down from behind at the Mississippi Valley 40. You've been calling for it all game long. Well, somebody up here saw something. Relayed it to the uh, offensive coordinator, Jermino, and Jermino made a good call. Yeah. Bethea kept it and just took off. Nobody was there. So both safeties blitzed, so there was nobody on the back end. First down, BCU at the Valley 40. 3.15 to go. Clock still running, and this is now turning into a game-killer drive for the Wildcats. We're learning how to close. Two receivers both to the left, tight end to the right, the weak side. They're going to hand the ball off to Jimmy Robinson. Got a lane a little bit, got three on the play, second and seven from the 38. So if you're Mississippi Valley, when do you start using your timeouts? Well, under two minutes. Because the, I don't know, that's NFL. We get the too many warnings. So you only got two left. Ball's on the, the 37. And the, play, the play clock just started. So we, we, we're good. Yep. 231 and counting, 18 seconds on the play clock. Wildcats still moving pieces around the chessboard. Trying to be matched by Mississippi Valley. One man for the green and, gold, green and silver, one's on late. Two receivers stacked up to the right. It's going to be a strong side run. Robinson tries to bounce it outside. He's going to be swallowed up and dropped for a loss They're of gonna one. They're going to call a timeout now. Anthony Blakely. Yeah, he, actually, they'll say he got no gain back to the line of scrimmage. So timeout, Mississippi Valley. So they got one timeout left. Two minutes and 12 seconds. Wildcats with third down and seven. So All right, put yourself in offensive coordinator Joe Gabino's shoes. I'm already, already, there. already there. I'm already there. Do you run it and force them to take their final timeout? Right. Or do you go for a pass play and try and kill this game by getting a first down? I will run the football, force them to use the timeout because it's still a two-score game. It's hard to do it with uh, no timeouts. And what it would do, too, it would give you an opportunity to set up a play for fourth down. But we'll take a timeout. When we come back, we'll take you through the end of this contest. 2-12 to go. Wildcats trying to hang on for their first conference win of the year. 20-7 to is our score. You're listening to Bethune-Cookman Football on the Cata Network on 1380 WELA.
2-12 left in the ball game. Wildcats up 20-7 trying to close the show. They got third down and seven from the Mississippi Valley. Oh, sorry, from their, yeah, from the Mississippi Valley 37. Got to get to the 30-yard line for a first down and probably kill this game. It's Markai Shaw out of the backfield. Bethea takes off and runs quarterback draw, lost a yard. To call a timeout. And final timeout going to be called by Mississippi Valley with 2.04 to go. When I saw Shaw go into the, the flat, flat I thought they were going to pass it to him. But uh, it not, was just a quarterback. Why not, why not pitch it to him right it, there? It was just a quarterback draw. Hmm. And they'll probably punt this trying to pin Valley deep, although Anthony Frederick has had two touchbacks from similar positions tonight. But if he can pin them inside the 10, be, and let the defense pin their ears back and try to start chasing a quarterback who we know is not on the stablest of legs, that could be the end of the ball game. 2.06 to go, and they're just showing um, on the, the big screen here the... Leilani Armenta, the female quarterback for female Jackson kicker. State, a, a kicker, excuse me, for Jackson State, who got a couple of extra points against Pine Bluff last week. And okay. her first game of the season was the game where we against were up us, there right. against us, and she had a couple of kickoffs. Okay, they're gonna, we're going to punt the football. Yep. Let's angle that thing out of bounds. But the, that's a great, great story. First HBC uh, woman player to score points in an HBCU football game. Frederick gets the punt away. It's angling towards the near side. It's going to bounce at the 10, take a... Um, Mississippi Valley roll to the 12, okay. Okay. and that is where the Delta Devils will start. No timeouts, 157, down two scores. With a minute and 57. And with the the defense has, has held on, wow. right? So wow, have they held on. Defense, during the season, the defense has allowed an average of 391 yards per game. Right now... The Delta Devils have 328 yards total. 230 passing, 200, uh, um, excuse me, 98 rushing. <laughs> it's funny, both teams cleared the huddle, lined up, and then now because the TV is in timeout, we, are, uh, <laughs> we go back to their respective sidelines. Once again, uh, SWAC football coming up this week. Florida A&M at Alabama A&M. Southern at Alcorn. Texas Southern at Jackson State. Arkansas Pine Bluff at Prairie View. Grambling State at Alabama State. Those are your SWAC matchups on Saturday. Thank you for sticking with us on this Thursday night here in Daytona Beach. Almost 11 p.m. local time. Not a lot of the fans are still left and some making their way to the exits. But it is a school night late here. Student section was uh, was strong for most of the game, and now they're starting to thin out. About 4,500 announced attendance here at Bethune-Cookman tonight. Once again, Bethune-Cookman football continues. Southwestern Athletic Conference play next Saturday with a matchup against the Alabama a and Bulldogs. The game will be broadcast live on HBCU Go, but if you can't watch, you can listen to all the action live at youtube.com slash Network or listen locally in Daytona Beach on 1380 W-E-L-E. You know, you know, I was looking at you, and it's no shave November. So I'm going to be like, <laughs> be like Santa Claus by the time we get to Orlando. <laughs> I'm not sure I really follow all that. I just like <laughs> to have a beard because it's cool. No, I, and, I, and, I, I, and I hate them, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go with the no shave. And because if I, if I go clean shaven, I look like I'm 12 years old. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> Minus the fact that I don't have a lot of hair on the top of my head. Well, we'll let that slide. But, okay. uh, yeah, no I, shave. I, I won't say what else you are. You, you're, not, you, you, you're 12 years old, all right. You're a shorty. <laughs> <laughs> oh, come on now. That's, that's no, a little bad. No, 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 no. We're just, we just killing time, man. We're just killing time. With <laughs> now the players, you, when you, you, were, you went up and, uh, and, and just came back, the players all got up, ready to go, in formation, and then the red hat was still on the field. And both coaches called the players back to the sideline. Oh, okay. I thought I had missed something. Okay, let's play defense here. Nothing cheap. Nothing cheap. Three down linemen for Bethune-Cookman. 1.57 to go in the ball game. 
Wildcats with a 20 to seven lead, trying to close out their first conference win of the year, only their second win of the season. Mm -hmm. Their first win came all the way back, 31 to six, second game of the year against Savannah State. We were in this building for that one. And Dees is back at safety. He had that big interception early in the second half. Williams takes the snap, rolls to his right. He's gonna be dragged down from behind him. He gets away at the 15, hit hard at the no 15 gain. yard line. No gain on the play. They got another guy hurt and he's down. Another, another timeout. Steven Sparrow made, came up and made a nice tackle. Oh, correction, that was 37. Uh, Anthony Alonzo came up and made the tackle. You, you know, we've seen a lot of kids getting a chance to play because of the injury and it's giving us some depth because there's no drop off when these new kids coming in. Last week we saw Nick Rawls start at safety. He has a, a, a quad pull. He's not even dressed out tonight. And you saw another guy step up. And young kids getting a chance to play, man, which is great. Yep. And there's a down Delta Devil who is being helped to the sideline now. It's an offensive lineman, Jacob Allen, the right tackle. He will be replaced by Khalil James Ware off the sideline. Clock running now because of the run, 141 and counting in the fourth quarter. Williams, the quarterback. He's back to pass, gonna throw to the far sideline. It's caught. Tackle inbound. made inbounds by Joshua Thornhill. They do get enough for the first down up to the 24 yard line, 122 to go. Hurry up offense for Mississippi Valley. Four down linemen for the Wildcats. Here's the snap. Williams looking at a oh. false start. Yeah. So that, well, that's one way to stop the clock. Is there a 10 second? No, it's not a 10 second run. That's ten, in the NFL. Yeah, but the clock will start on the set. Under one, Under one minute, minute, there's a 10 second runoff, but there is 114 to go, so there will not be that. But it is a five yard penalty back to the four, 14 yard line. So now first and 15 for Mississippi Valley, down 20 to seven with 113, 112, 110, and counting, and no timeouts. Williams takes the snap, looking, looking, now throwing deep down the far seam. It's caught, leaping catch, 45, down to midfield for Mississippi Valley. Here come the Delta Devils. Quarterback hurt. And the quarterback is down, clock stops, 101 to go. Ooh, it just... Another second, they're going to have to be a 10-second run barely, He can barely put uh, weight on his right leg. Another second, they would have had to have a 10-second runoff. I'm sorry, that's not the quarterback. That's, that's, that's the center, Marquan Perkins. So, again, injuries for both sides playing a big pack and factor not, here. And it's not even humid tonight. Yeah. Now it's going to be – I think they're down to their third-string center, Mississippi Clock's Valley. Running. Clock's running. Under a minute 53. now, 53 seconds. From the 48-yard line, first and 10. Williams takes a snap under pressure immediately. Down he goes. No, he got the ball away before he got uh, hit. He flipped it to the running back who gets back to the line of scrimmage and nothing else. That was a nice play by uh, Williams to just kind of toss it to his running back as he was being spun down by Eddie Walls. Did you see Walls back flip and get up? <laughs> no on gain on the play. Second and 10 from the 48. Williams back to pass, deep down the left-hand side. It's intercepted. Oh, no, it's dropped. Darnell Dees could have sealed the game right there, but he dropped it. It was the same play on his that was his last interception. Deep seam route. And the safety just playing center field came up and almost picked it again. That was pick six all written all yeah. over it, you know, with his, with his speed. You can tell he's so disappointed. He put his hands on his head. <laughs> and I called it an interception because I saw him standing there waiting for the ball. Here we go, third and 10, the 49 for Valley. Going right to left, 21 seconds left. Wildcats trying to hang on. Snap to Williams. Back to pass, pressure from the backside. He escapes to his left, tries to find room to run. Now he's gonna throw the ball deep down the field. Caught at the 30 yard line. Caught by, uh, I believe, Jacoby Thomas on the catch. No, correction, that's uh, Malik Antoine on the catch, all the way down to the 25 yard line. Great job by Tajerian Williams to extend the play, move to his left as the pocket broke down. They hurry up to the line, three, three seconds three. left in the game. They get the snap off, Williams looking, throwing towards the end zone, incomplete. Jabari Jowden with the pass breakup, zeros on the clock and that should do it. Cats get off the snag, guys. That's it. 
This one belongs to the maroon and gold. I, I'm happy. 20 to seven. Happy for the kids, happy for, for Coach uh, Woody getting his first conference win. And this ball club is the same ball club we, we've beaten the last three years now. And great ball game. Uh, we won't be in last place, let's put it that they way. They will not be in last place. We vault Valley. And with two games to go, the Wildcats have a conference win. Raymond Woody, I, I, I'm sure he's not going to show any emotion when I talk to him on Wednesday out of practice for our, for our pregame show interviews. But um, he's going to be elated, I'm sure. Yeah, you know, we've seen big improvement. You know, after the Grambling game, these kids, these kids came out and had to practice. When they got off the plane, they went to practice a couple of hours later. And it's, it, it's been Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. They were ready to jacked up. I went out to practice on Wednesday. They were jacked up, ready to play ball. So these kids have continued to buy in and continue to lock in. And they played the best game I've seen. They played a little bit even better than they played against Savannah State. The defense uh, it, it was a bit shaky at times. The defense came out flat to start the second half and made us worry a little bit. The offense, after putting up big numbers in the first half, they, they went back to being vanilla. And they kind of got away from, you know, put the, put the ball in the end zone two times. Um, could have been three, four, maybe five, but they kicked some field goals inside the red zone as well. And uh, again, the defense getting three takeaways, big for this Wildcats team. And one more home game left next week. Growth. You saw growth and you saw victory tonight. And that's two things that Coach Wood is going to take and he's going to build on it. This was a great foundation, a great ball club. We heard a lot of people talking negative, you know, about what they've seen the Wildcats do. One thing that I saw tonight, these kids have no quit in them. They've been fighting all season long. Talik Batea grew up tonight. He grew up well tonight. Passed the football, and he ran the football pretty good. And our running backs played well. The offensive line, they're the unsung heroes tonight. Let's, they, get, they, let's get you some final stats from today's game. Bethune-Cookman. Actually, Mississippi Valley State, 24 first downs to BCU's 15. Mississippi Valley State, 46 carries for 98 yards, 2.1 yards a carry. BCU, 30 carries, 115 yards, 3.8 yards a carry. That big Bethea run towards the end was the key to, the, to that stat. Um, 13 completions for Bethune Cookman, 177 yards. That's 13 yards a reception. Um, Mississippi Valley, 17 receptions, 296 yards. That's 17.4 yards of reception. 296 passing yards, 197 passing yards. Uh, quarterback play, 17 of 30 for Mississippi Valley, 13 of 19 for Talik Bethea. 76 plays run by the Mississippi Valley offense for 394 yards. So they're right on. The, the BCU defense gave up. Three yards more than their season average, 394 yards. VCU 49 plays, 292 total yards of offense. They're over their season average by about 40 to get to 292. Penalties, nine penalties, 70 yards for Mississippi Valley, including uh, the two, the uh, roughing the passer and the pass interference on the third down and long play for Bethune Cookman that essentially ended the game yeah. when Valley maybe still had a chance late in the fourth quarter. Four penalties for 50 yards. BCU Again? did not take a penalty in the first half. Well, wow. uh, In the second half, rather. That's great. All in the first half. I'm sure, And I'm sure that was a point of emphasis at halftime for the coaching staff. Sure was. Because they true. got two penalties in the first quarter, two in the second quarter. We're thinking, well, what's going on with this team? No penalties in the second half of Bethune Cookman. And feather in the cap of the – oh, no, excuse me. Uh, BCU, something they need to clean up, 0 of 9 on mm. third down. Wow. 0 of 9 on third down. Mm -mm -mm. Their third down efficiency this season, just 29.8% on third down. But they are in third and long situations a lot because you run on run a screen on first down, they run up the middle on second down, and then it's third and 10, 9, 8, 11, That's somewhere script. in there, right? And then, you know, you, that is not conducive to being very effective on third down. You've got to get those plays early on in down and distance. To maybe maybe you get third and three or four, mm -hmm. and then you'll start picking up more of those. Mississippi Valley was 5 of 14 
on third down. Individual leaders in tackles, Omar Emmons had nine for Valley. Dearest Thomas had 11. Of course, Dearest Thomas will be absent for the first half against Alabama A&M with that targeting penalty. So Somebody got to step up. Iverson Clement had seven tackles. Jabari Jowden also had seven tackles. Adrian Hall and Amari Jones each had a sack. Eddie Walls had a half sack. Mississippi Valley had no sacks against Bethune-Cookman. First That's game of the great. year that BCU has given up no sacks. They, got, they, got, they, they, they just got uh, DJ McCarthy yep. with the water. Tyleek Bethea, 136 yards passing. Markai Shaw, one pass, 41 yards, a <laughs> touchdown on the trick Leading play. Passer. Oh, man. I got to talk to him about that coming up this week. Jaden Sisk at 174 yards passing. Tigerian Williams, 63. Jacoby Thomas, 59. Uh, receiving yards, or Jackson Davis, five receptions for Mississippi Valley. Malik Antoine had two. Jacoby Thomas had two. Tink Boyd, four catches for Bethune Cookman. Three for Dakari Allen Johnson. One for Jalen Terzato. Receiving yards, Jackson Davis, a game high 92 out of that tight end spot. He, he, he's a big guy, and they mm -hmm. use his height well. Mm -hmm. Um, Anthony Blakely had 59 yards receiving Malik Antoine 39 Tink Boyd 76 yards receiving and a, and a touchdown Dakari Allen Johnson 37 yards Jalen Terzato 31 yards so they spread the ball out pretty evenly when they did throw the ball uh, Jimmy Robinson 61 yards on the ground Talik Bethea 34 all on one carry to ice the game for BCU Mark Shaw had 19 for Mississippi Valley Jared Wilson 55 yards on the ground to Fabian Fant 40 Jacoby Thomas 20 and Tink Boyd had two touchdowns. Jared Wilson had one touchdown. And then th the kicking game for both sides was a little suspect, but uh, 0 for 3 on field goals for Mississippi Valley, 1 for 3, or no, 2 for 4, excuse me, for Bethune Cookman. That all adds up to your final score Bethune Cookman 20, Mississippi Valley State 7. Daryl, final thoughts on this one? Uh, I think it's great for the kids to get a victory. You see them, you see them bouncing around on the sideline. I, I've watched them walk out of here with their head down for week after week after week. They put they put forth great effort. There's still more to come. There's still more to learn, and it was a learning experience, especially that drive. We saw the two minute drill for the first time during the season. So I, I think Coach Whitty has a lot to go back with and tinker with, and uh, he took the lid off the playbook. We ran a we ran a what reverse trick play trick play trick play reverse pass reverse for a pass. For a touchdown, and that and took the lid off. So I think I think what we saw tonight was great. Was was great. Once again, your final score from uh, Daytona Beach, Florida, and Larry Kelly Field in Daytona Stadium: the Bethune Cookman Wildcats twenty, the Mississippi Valley State Delta Devils seven. For Cattle Network director Eugene Robinson, our producer and studio host Larry Steele and Dan Ryan, SID's Bryce Wynowski and Brian Harvey, my analyst in the booth with me today, Daryl Natio. Welcome back, Daryl, after a couple weeks off. My name is Michael Torello. Thank you so much for listening to our broadcast this evening. We'll see you next Saturday as the Wildcats take on Alabama A&M. Have a very pleasant rest of your evening. You're welcome.